to be? I gosh, how do you do it? Me? Yes. <laughs> It's my really not useful superpower. I, wow. That is, that is really, really impressive. <laughs> because I always think I've muted and it turns out I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, my name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir, and welcome to The Convergence, um, a homebrew game of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition uh, taking place in a collapsing multiverse. I definitely think Tiffany has a fear of silence. Which is which is interesting given the current situation in the household she in which she resides. Um, and as to the the question to kick things off, um, we're gonna I have I have a creative way dork to help you get that answer. Um, although the, you you can always now you want to stay tonight because tonight's gonna be two guys. So you can always just slip off tonight and listen to tonight's vod yes last week's vod and then listen to tonight on the vod. But you don't want to not be here for the live show. I know you. Um, so to that end, we're going to make a round of the table with our introductions, um, who we are, where we find ourselves, um, who we're playing tonight, and what is the one thing from last week that you need Outer Dork to know to be ready for this week? I love that. You know, I have like thrown major combat encounters at these four. I've, I've left two of them bleeding out, making death saves, and I don't think I've ever seen that level of terrified look as we just had right there. I think just this to... is where it's important to say that just moments ago, a couple of us were like, we have already forgotten what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whole week ago. <laughs> oh. Fair. Fair. I don't know. A lot happened last week. Y'all can pick one thing to bring up, right? And we'll make it easy. We'll start with Pond who should have at least something to share from last week's session. That is true. I definitely do. Hello, everybody. I'm That Other Pond. You can find me over at Twitch at That Other Pond, where I also play D&D um, on Sundays, and then I just get up to shenanigans for the rest of the week. Um, I play Aveline. She's a human fighter who is not from this world and is brought over from the most recent Convergence event. Um, and... What happened last week was that she met someone she once banged, but it wasn't really her. So that's confusing. And it was a lot. And there was a lot of blushing and a lot of awkwardness, but it was cool in the end. That's my summary for the whole game, except for the latter half. I think that's, that's the most on the nose we've like, we, we have flirted literally with how to talk about that event. That is the most on the nose it has been stated. Well, I had to summarize it very quickly, so you just got to be direct. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> and I got through all those interactions without blushing until now. All right, Tiff, you're up. Hi, I'm Tiff, or TS, and I'm playing Sibelia Mary Awning, or Sib. Uh, I've got to say that was the best wrap-up ever. Um. Yeah, I think uh, I think the thing from last week was um, mostly Katie and Sib worked very hard to um, give Pond and her friend time to figure out if it was her friend <clears throat> and to keep Sam from stealing all the books because there was a lot of books. Oh, and let's see, uh, I'm a human ranger and I think that's it. <laughs> I hit everything. <laughs> That works. We'll come on around to NLK. Hello, I am NLK or Nightlight Night, and I stream here on Twitch on Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, but very happy to be here on Wednesdays. Um, and I play the Forge Cleric Katie, uh, who is a half orc. I'm trying to think. Um, so last week, uh, we all cosplayed, so I was blue because um, the. <laughs> Face paint didn't come across quite as intended, so I was definitely given off Avatar vibes, which was fine. Um, but in game, I think, I mean, really, it was the entire episode was us having an aside trying to figure out what to do if we were going to go to a library, um, go to the Capitol 
or go into this like null camp. And I think we chose the latter. <laughs> so that's basic, because really the whole thing, there was no combat. It was just talking, us finding out a lot about the, like the shard and everything and about the interwoven pack rituals of gnolls and then us deciding what the heck we were going to do. <laughs> That's a good question. Did we decide if you guys were the good guys? Of course we're the good guys. We're the main characters. Yeah, we're the protagonists. So whatever. It's all about the narrative. It's all about the narrative. If they want to be the good guys, they can write their own game. <laughs> <sighs> Molly? I'm Barely Molly or Bear or Molly, whatever you prefer. I post a lot of art over on my uh, Twitter. I almost said Twitch again. Um, and that's all I can do for right now. Hopefully some art streams soon. But I play Samantha Metal, um, who is a gnome artificer who gets up to all types of shenanigans in this game. Um, and I have notes. Some of them don't make a lot of sense, but I know that we have a matriarchal gnome who is has been usurped by a knoll shaman? Question mark. He shall not be howled upon. Um, and that is bad. Bad is all caps. Um... And Ambrose is the brother of Alina, Alana, slash Clarice, slash not Clarice, slash blushed, so I think it is Clarice. Those are my notes. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but yes. It makes sense all up in here. So so do you feel fully caught up, Outer Dork? Because that was, that was for you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> which, to which, t totally got sweet. To be fair, that really was a pretty decent summary. Um, there was the extended uh, interaction between Helena, who was not Clarice, Clarice being the young lady that a younger Aveline had befriended. Um, okay, banged, but neither here nor there. I think I think I struggle with the word because I feel like it's a little too not. Aveline? That's totally fair. I don't think that's even a word in like her language. Like it would probably be a different word, but bang, you shot them with something? Yeah, that'd be too scary. Um, but so there were the interactions there, the backstory about the Knolls, how they've come into the area. There was a really interesting, I do recommend the VOD to anyone who wasn't with us last week. Um I know was no, it was a knoll was was usurped by a knoll. That's just Sam's notes are a little wonky because Sam was stealing books at the same time she was writing. So um, that's what she said, but that's not what she meant to say. Distracted by her own. Um, oh, my God. I didn't please. even realize I said that, but it's funnier. Now yes. there. Oh, and we we ran into a gnome in the theater. Yes. Correct. So that's where we ended up. We went into the knolls like whole thing which is in a mall and then we ended up in a movie theater and then wizard of oz got we, we got wizard of oz yes and now we have met a gnome in the movie theater who was doing like a projector situation right and that was actually probably one of the most important points that we all that we all just didn't mention <laughs> yeah, like, yeah yeah we'll get to that yeah i think i thought right after i did my bad spiel then i'm like oh I should read my notes before this, I suppose. Indeed, pay no attention to them. Oh, actually, no, he came right out from behind the curtain pretty quick when they mentioned that they knew where they had they had their hands on a convergence shard. He was, like, all about engaging them in that conversation. Uh, so let me open that up. Okay, before we actually officially start for the night, having done our recap, I do want to give a chance to start giving some stuff away again because I've been terrible about, doing, about, terrible about doing giveaways, and I just ordered a big stack of convergence stickers. So 
if you throw exclamation point crit in the chat, um, I'll do an official like recap to make sure we hit all the major points one more time. Um, we'll give a shout out to our sponsors and then we'll do the giveaway and then we'll start the titles and we'll actually play the game. Um, because I really do want a chance to give everybody a chance to get these newer stickers. Um, I know new stickers. So yeah, that was kind of like the, the, the team did a pretty good job of covering everything that got us to where we are. Um, which is fun. Uh, the conversations with Helena, her brother having recently been killed by the null, she was sent to observe a really neat meta conversation where everyone kind of just broke character and had a very serious, like, okay, the Nulls are bad. The new blades are bad. What do we care about either of those two groups? We have a convergence shard. We want to figure out what to do. Should we just break the stupid thing open or not? Um, which was good because the table, I think, needed that moment to really just kind of take some time and say, we've had a lot of stuff thrown at us. We're going through our journal now. Which one looks like the main quest line? Because for whatever reason, this game doesn't highlight the main quest and the side quest separately. Which is how you end up, you know, downloading Skyrim and building a house and moving everybody into it and then killing like 12 dragons and then wondering, wait, what am I supposed to be doing this game again? Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to go talk to the Greybeards. Um, cause you still haven't done that yet. Um, but then they got word that there was something, some kind of entity, um, portraying themselves as a God in the back of the knoll encampment inside an old shopping mall. And so they set out in order to find that person, which they did. And that's kind of where we left off last week. I felt like it was really good. I feel like it's a hard one to top. So I think we should just cancel tonight because I don't think I can do better than last week. Nope. Fair enough. We're all here. We're all here already. All the Gwent we all have cards? our popcorn. Wait. 90% alive. You, we should really get you guys into the campaign 90% alive. No, that means all four of you have to live. Yeah. Can we shoot for 75%? <laughs> just pick the one to go I'm already missing an arm I am only willing to miss one more limb okay oh that's true I don't like how easily you agree to that and the sticker is going to go to More stuff to send to Barely Molly. I never win things. Yay. There we go. Right. Well, maybe not. Hey, uh, I've been putting my name in every week for a year. <laughs> can we see it? Yes, we can. Uh, I just have to find it. It's on here somewhere. Uh, let's see, where is it going to be here? Um, with the record show, we are starting late because I have to go find this picture because Pond wants to see it. I'm not even sorry about it. Nope. Uh, character art. It should be this one. Uh, let's hope this doesn't blow out the, uh, the jam board. Oh, that's not so bad. Bravo, thank you for the, the sub. Mother of Jedi, I'm sure will appreciate that. There it is. I used that. That was what I ended up using for the, the sticker. And it's going to be a die cut, so it's kind of shaped around that. Um, Polymorph, I cannot change that. So if anybody asks, let them know that I tried. There's a there's something wrong with the extension. It it would not let me change the uh, the characters on it. I tried, um, but you're now officially been delegated to official clarifier of the overlay problems. 
just so you know. Okay, now let's get the game started. Uh, let me see here. Keep that where that is. Keep that where that is. Oh, yeah, and then I push that button. We are warriors to the very end. We must stay strong. Together we will win. In the universe there is darkness. So when we find our heroes, you are they are standing in the remains of an abandoned movie theater. About half the chairs have been ripped out, tossed aside. Uh, piles of other debris line the sides of it, including down by the, what may have been some kind of a viewing screen. Oddly enough, it's still mostly intact. A large collection of metal and glass hovers in the center of the space, turning ever so slightly, filling the room with light. And uh, a diminutive figure stands towards the back of the theater, very excited to see you. He claps his hands together. You, you have one of the shards? I did not say have. I said we knew where one was. I just wanted to clarify that. What do you mean you know where it is? I know who has it. But you have it. Yeah. You can get it very quickly. I, you're doing a lot of assuming here. I just want to state that. I just have information that could help. And we were really well, I don't need information. excited I need for charts. the op- Well, but we also need information. The are you referring to the fact who are you? As in you have a shard currently, or in the plural of shards, you currently have shards? No, no, no. No, no, no. I do not have a shard. I have many theories about the shards, and I have very, very confident in those theories. I need a shard to confirm the theories. Well, I have quite a few theories myself. I would love to confer with you. Do you have... A name? Notes? Oh, what a is- name, I guess. Oh, my name. Of course. And you, you would normally expect at this moment he would Your share name. his name. And instead, he actually takes a moment to smooth off his jacket, to round his shoulders, plant his feet square, and then take several warming breaths. Tedophilius, the senior researcher of convergence events in the new plane of existence, son of Tedophilus Sibelius of the recovery team without the no intelligence, and son of Yedophilus, the first gnome ever to recognize lack of air above altitude, and then he just keeps going. When he stops, I'm just going to go, bless you. He pauses after about three minutes where he's starting to turn a little pinkish to just take another deep intake of air and then is a, it starts again. Perhaps a nickname? A short title. Oh. Okay. And he starts in again. What's the first thing he says? Ted Ophilis, the senior researcher of convergence events in the new plane of existence, son of, and then kind of keeps going. How about Toto? Okay. Yeah, Toto, I'm going to need you to take it down a notch, please. Oh, well, Tinny. You, Tinny. You asked my name. It is tradition that we include all major family events and histories, as well as highlights of those of our grandfathers and elders when we acknowledge our, our names. It's part of the naming process. That's fascinating. You know, my name is Sevilla Marianne. 
I go by Sib. To everybody. And and my name is Katazar, but I I go by Katie. Oh. So, so can Toto oh. or Tinny or Tad? Something. Ted? Ted? Ted sounds good. Yeah. Ted of the very long, impressive name in events. It is a pleasure to meet you. I still don't think my mother was correct. I don't think there is there is a lack of oxygen above certain altitudes. I think the air continues as far as necessary. Do you run out of oxygen when you finish saying your entirety of your name? No. I usually take a break and sit down for a few minutes, about two-thirds of the way through. Right. Okay. Not very many gnomes where I come from know their entire name by heart. You are a master among your race. No, I simply and practice. We it. It's a priority in the family. Now, my shard. Uh, not your shard. My shard. Let's get that very clear. Well, do you know how to use but, it? What to do with it? How to release this you power? Don't, you don't have one and have never examined one. Out oh. of the two of us here, I am more an expert and senior in this field than you are, young so, man. So you're prepared to return a Convergence event reality to its original state? Uh... I could and will. I'm going to figure that out in my own time. I'm Who's ready. Who's asking you? I just need the shard. Well, you need a lot of things, clearly, Ted. Now, if I have the shard, we can do that. You can, by return, a convergence event. Are you saying people who came over from a convergence event would go home? I don't know, and he like pointedly looks at the other gnome, if I trust you with that knowledge. No, if I trust you either. I would like hey, uh, to uh, do... Uh, 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 oh, go ahead. I would, I would like to do an insight check, if I can, on this fishy gnome. Sure. I think he's just... I think he's just... At a nat 20. A nat 20. A nat 20. What is this boy hiding? I need to know. She is fired up. She's fired up. You stay. I mean, he is 100% sincere that he know, believes he knows how to reverse the convergence event. He believes he can do it with the shard, although he is leaving something out of that. And he absolutely does not trust you. It's fine. <laughs> You sir, Ted of Ted. the long name. May I introduce Sam of the creative Twinkie storage? Is that all I am? Do you a Twinkie dispenser? No, no, no. I said creative storage. You're a frosty missile dispenser. Ooh, I like that. Thank you. Perhaps if you could give us some information to get us on our way, we could then figure out how to get the shard to you and maybe we can work together and maybe I, this isn't my forte i feel ted uh how did you come to be here oh i came through a convergence event i, I understand that but are you in charge of the gnolls here oh no no they moved in sometime after i set my laboratories back in the further theaters do they For fortunately you... they're afraid of me i'd like to keep it that way how did you manage to keep them away and and scare them away he glances at sam i don't know if i really want to tell you that just now now i could trust loyal minions with that information Okay, not. we are not minions. I will happily either. get a knoll over here to see your wonderful tiny face. Ah. Um, and then he kind of looks at, at Aveline appraisingly, but then you won't get back to your reality. I am unsure if I believe that you can. Do you do hold such little faith in me? How dare you? As if no, we I... don't have our own plans. No, I'm talking to him, not okay. to you, Evelyn. I'm yelling <laughs> at this like, I, You do magic, so... 
How dare you? How dare- and JB is just going to be, like, beeping furiously into this gnome's face as I just- How dare you insinuate that I know so little? How dare you? Do you have a plan? Yes, we do have a plan. We just came up with a plan. And it and, and first of all, I am not in the habit of giving away or divulging my plans to perfect strangers that I've just met who are cowering in a theater filled with gnolls. I'm not cowering. I'm working under the protection. They keep everything else away. I get to work in peace and I can unlock the secret of returning realities. Have you successfully done any of that? It's still very theoretical, but I'm very confident in the work. That's why I sent the gnolls to get me a shard. How are you able to control the gnolls? Out of fear. He kind of looks around. Some creatures fear what they don't understand. So far, they don't understand much. They just know that... He who shall not be questioned wants a green shiny shard and was able to give them a pretty good description of it. You're honey buns! I'm getting tired of waiting for them to present one to me, though. But if you have one, then I don't need them. You can be my minions, and we can return realities together. How how did the new blades come to be part of this the who? scheme? The, the new blades. They are the reason that we are here. They wanted... They attacked our, our base. They attacked our home. Oh, well, there might be some amount of currency from this reality that was made available to the gnolls. They were going to trade for it. I don't know. She just looks at Sam and, and is just like, I have... I don't know what to do here. <laughs> She's very lost. But I believe firmly if you have a shard, and I do thank you, my dear friend, if you had had as much time to invest in research in this as I already have, I certainly believe you would have eventually caught up to me. But the truth is, you haven't invested that time, I don't believe. I might be wrong, but unless you have a presentation prepared to explain your plan, I do believe I'm slightly ahead of you. We should work together, you get me the shard, and one other minor little piece that I need, and I can begin returning realities. Listen, you saying that I'm behind you is completely incorrect because I have everything that you need to even do whatever experiment you're talking about. I suggested we confer notes. You called me a minion, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Such a folly on your part, good sir. Such a folly. Ooh, ooh. I will catapult your tiny body into another hemisphere. Now, what I would like to understand is if you want to work together and maybe go over some of the notes that you have so I can see where you're at. Because at this point, if I leave here, mm, you're in the same spot, but I have options. So how about you stop with the attitude and the demanding and you get with working with us or I'm out of here. And so is that shard. Hmm. Not a lot to say, huh, Ted? Interesting. He looks at Aveline. How is she coming with returning you to your reality? Has she even mentioned it yet? We did have a... I asked a question once, and she was very honest with me, which is nice, and she treats me as an equal, which is also appreciated. However, I will say, I don't know much about this science stuff, admittedly. I didn't understand half of what either of you two just said, but... If you're both scientists and you're both are trying to um, be more sciencey than one another, why don't you com you both compare notes? Is there any harm in that? We can learn to trust you if Sam can understand what you're getting at. Otherwise, we have no way to really know if you're being honest with us or anything like that. And I'm happy to just, you know, 
And she takes her great sword out and just kind of swings it around a little bit. Well, that escalated quickly. Well, you also said you you gave away the flaw, which is if Sam has enough time, she'll be able to get me there regardless. So we don't really need you. Well, the question is, will she get you there before you die of old age? I'm pretty young. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. How long have you been working on this? And that is my question. Or if, could you just give your, I'm sure you have a little notebook. Sam has a million of them from what I've seen. There's always a new one. I don't understand it. But um, can you give it to her to just look? Just look. Okay. Follow me. Turns around, he walks up into the hallway between the theaters and across the hall into the next theater. There are notebooks on every flat surface to be seen. He makes a big sweeping gesture. There's shelves he's built, stacks of books, a couple of like makeshift uh, plush chairs. Your friend is welcome to begin catching up at any time. All of my notes are available. Where's your last entry? He points in one corner. That one. All right, I'm going to pick that book up and immediately start going through it. Within the first couple of pages, it says, if you reference volume 745, you will notice. Continue. And then nothing makes sense. While Sam is doing that, Katie, <laughs> and, and mulling over what to do, Katie is going to turn to Ted. So how long have you been here? Uh, hmm. To, to write this many I think I average tomes. one book every 12 hours. I don't sleep much. There's a very large supply of this, this syrup that if you mix it with water, you can drink it and you don't sleep. Immediately, immediately, Katie looks at Sam. No. <laughs> you are not allowed. <laughs> sure. You start to comb through the books and you can you can track some of the logic. It's a lot of arcane theory coupled with some kind of clunky uh, mechanical calculations. There are sections involving uh, optics and prisms and other forms of crystals. There's like a whole book that gets re-referenced that has pull out diagrams of all kinds of devices using some kind of focal device um, lenses. Um, but the more you look, the more you recognize that you've been playing around with the convergence crystal for about four days and he's about five to six years ahead of you. But how um, how reliable could any of this information truly be since he's never even held a crystal before? There like is how is he how is he studying this is what I'm like, how do you study something you no one else has? He's not seen up close. He just has a theoretical idea of it. Like I'm trying to see like these diagrams of other crystals. Yeah, you can study another crystal, but that doesn't mean it has anything to do with this one. True. Most of it is made up of thought experiments. So like there are whole books of if this is true, then this is true. And what's how long are you guys going to let Sam go? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I had a thought then. I was going to say until the popcorn was done, but he's kind of a popcorn maker, I'm assuming. So, Oh, yeah. He's happy to make popcorn and sit there to watch Sam read through his books. <laughs> I mean, I assume that while I'm reading, I'm like, I'm asking him. Like, I'm not just going to sit there and read. I'm going to say, like, how did you come to this conclusion? How how are you even studying this? Like, what what was, why would you think that this is this way? Like, it, I would 
not just be like thumbing through trying to come to my own conclusion. He said he was going to share his research with us. He never actually said that yet. He said he was going to show it to you. You're the ones demanding he share it. Less demanding and more asking. He's demanding we give over something that people have died for. I don't know this gnome. That's a fair point. Um, However, his ego is equally bruised. So as often as you ask, he simply points you to another book. Well, how do you know this is true? Well, that's covered in, t- in, in volume 642, page 75. Can I ask you a question while Sam is uh, taking in your, your brilliance? Okay, you started on this. I want to go home. Uh, how long have you been here? Do you know? Well, as I said, I can do about one book every 12 hours. And again, as long as I don't sleep. No, I... no, 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 no. Not, not here in this location. How long have you been on Earth? Oh, this particular reality? Yeah. Uh, four hours longer than it took to start filling this room. So 16 hours? No, well, 16. You said one book every 12 hours. Yes. And there's probably about a thousand books in here. I'm just going to pretend I'm doing math and then just look at him. Not really your strong suit. So, a bit. The thought experiments all check out. Every single, you... uh, every single one ends in a confirmed hypothesis. That can Have be you ever observed. been to any other realities? Not intentionally. This one? But I did have a second cousin once who found themselves on a spell jammer. But that doesn't, that doesn't answer my question. Your second cousin got to a spell jammer. But have you been to other realities accidentally or on purpose? Well, no, but every single thought experiment has been confirmed. Well, thought experiments often are, especially when you're the only one thinking them. Uh, That's not how science works. Sure. Um, Question. What what did your convergence event look like? Green. How, How did it happen? What were you doing? Working. At? Project. This is going to be really long. If I'm getting one word answers, I'm trying, I'm trying to learn more about your experience because I've learned some about Evelyn's and some about Katie's and uh, maybe if we put some more stories I think together, once we've established more of a rapport, help. that kind of conversation would make more sense. But as of now, I'm quite torn between once again, offering an opportunity for you to access my minions and actually return people to their realities or going and letting all of them know that he who shall not be questioned is being questioned. Right, honey buns. Um, so something to know. Um, I don't know about your original reality, but demanding people be your minions is not-, not considered polite on Earth, and it tends to put people off. In fact, you're more likely to have somebody stab you than you are to have them be your minions. So just a friendly piece of advice there. Welcome to the world. Sorry, our... Um, our welcome uh, volunteer agency didn't get to you first. Uh, but uh, perhaps... We have an agency. We don't. Uh, I'm just going to say it out of the court. No, we really no, just don't. We don't have a tourism board for this. And we should. There you go. Project. Um, and to be but fair, just a, I invited you to be my minions. You know, it didn't sound that way. So maybe it's a little bit of a communication okay. issue we can work on. Why could we not be allies? Because someone's why, name why? has to be at the top of the research paper. And I refuse to relinquish lead authorship. Are you interested in getting results or a paper? What's the point of, of, of the results if there's no paper to follow it? If you do I... not publish, it did not happen. Okay. Can you have assistance and consults? Absolutely. Um. I, let uh, me make so this very clear. I am no one's assistant. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, look. Um... Oh, well, act, to, to be clear, you're someone's assistant. <laughs> yeah, he, I'm his assistant. <laughs> Aw. Look, I, five names don't take up nearly as much as yours do. Let's deal with that a little bit later in the process. We're not here to steal your paper. 
we're here because we can probably help each other. Gonna See, have I truly to don't care about all of your theoretical science. I'm a practical scientist. So you can have your theories. That's fine. I think this is very cute what you have done here. But um, there's nothing you can do with this without the materials. This is true. And there's no way for anyone who's from my alternate reality to be returned to it without this research. You can't do anything without the shard. Would it help if you guys just did like an hour long science off? I would be open to presenting a brief summary of my understandings if, and I mean if, you three were open to the possibility of joining as my minions in order to ensure that we can begin repairing the multiverse and returning realities to their full form. Red, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Goodbye. I don't want to shake hey, hands come on. Let's out. go set that camera up and get out of here. I think Sam is literally like, I'm done with this guy. He is giving no wiggle room out of any... I've never dealt with such asinine response to just a yeah. little bit of help or just a little give. You have to give even freaking a little. You want to collaborate, but you don't want to collaborate? You can take that mess. So oh, grab Sam so under so my arm and just so walk so out. This is giving me, ooh, ooh, okay. <clears throat> It's like school all over again. <laughs> would much rather go to a university and figure this mess out on my own, or I'll come back and kill this gnome and take all his freaking we're, we're research the gnome and myself. I don't need him, and I don't need people like him. I've been Sam dealing with out. people like him my entire life, telling me that I'm not good enough to do the kind of stuff that I do. And look at Mr. Freezy, and look at JB. They told me I couldn't make that. And I did. So he can take his research and shove it right up his gnomey butthole. I will go figure this out on my own like I've figured everything else out. So are you being like led out of like oh, down I'm away? I'm storming out. There's gumballs flying all over the place. So, so Katie so and the, Aveline are still standing there. Yeah. And I think Katie is just going to like fold her arms folded looking at Aveline at Sam and then down at Ted and just kind of like look down at him and say, you need the shard and we need your knowledge. We will not be your minions. And Sam is the most brilliant mind that I have ever, ever encountered. She is more smart than you. She will figure it out. So it's more the question of do you want to come along with us while we figure this out? And then slowly turn and just start walking, following Sam out. Aveline looked as if she was about to say something before Katie started talking, and she was really glad that Katie did instead, and she follows her out. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> you start to go out, and he goes, I can tell you miss her. Are you willing to wait that long? Aveline stops. <laughs> Katie stops as well. And she turns around. She is truly capable. I, I've never said she would not catch up to me. Be very clear. I never said she could not do this. I said I was ahead of her. That doesn't matter if you're not willing to help. You say that you're doing this to go home and to help other people get home, but you are only in this for your name on top of I feel a paper, like that's a very a piece small of paper. price to ask. I've already laid all the foundation. I've already created all the artifacts necessary. I've already figured out all the arcane rituals required to guide the energy. I can show you all of it. But I need a good faith statement that you will take it seriously and acknowledge that this is my work. 
No one will say that it is not part of your work. But are you doing this for you or are you doing this for others? There's a difference. It seems to be in this not case. Not there, but that right there. That right there. Ooh. The DM will note, never trust a scientist who doesn't want their name at the top of a research paper. It's, I totally get it. I totally understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get where he's coming from. But Katie, on the other hand. Katie, on the other hand, is like, why the heck does that matter? Dude, Rob asks that all the time. <laughs> it's just papers can be, can be burned. Knowledge can be lost. All of your notebooks, if something were to happen, fire could destroy them. One of us could destroy them. One of the gnolls could come in oh. and pee on all of them. You have a lot of paper in there. If you give me a good faith statement that you will listen intently and acknowledge that this is my work that we are continuing, I am more than happy to show you what I have. And I believe you will. You will want to be part of my work. We're not saying we don't want to be part of this. But I've seen constantly people wanting to be in power just for the sake of their ego. And if this is what this is about, and it's not for, the, for actually helping people, I want no part of this. We Yours will work with will you. the second reality I return. You have my word. How do we know that you will not use? We have one shard. And you we do not the, have it. You, we know where it is. You think it's the only shard? I'm not saying it's the only shard, but who... You could finish your own reality. You could go back to where you came from and publish your book. You could do this all for yourself and leave us behind. Oh, but that would make any we sense. We need... Why would I do that? Why not return all of the realities and then return home and publish? I don't know you personally. Well... You have adequately identified that it matters to me that my name be recognized, as is proper for my kind. I want my name and all of my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren to be the third name they state when they state who they are to a new person. I should be in the first minute of introduction, if not the first half minute. That will not happen if I simply return myself to reality. But if I can fix the entire multiverse and then go home and publish... I'll be the second name they mention for generations. Really, it just matters if it, your name's on the paper in your reality, right? Well, yes. So why don't we do a collaboration? You put your name on your paper, paper that you turn in your because reality, I which would we're not know. part of. Oh, Ted. I'd Ted, even, be, Ted, Ted, I'd Ted, even Ted. be willing to share the top line as long as my name if, comes first. Ted. Can I call you Ted? I'm going to call you Ted. Otherwise, I'm going to start calling you Toto. Look, it doesn't matter. Let's prove the theory. And then you can write your paper. Put your name on top when you go home. Because at this point, you're preventing yourself moving forward and going home. So it doesn't matter if you're at the top of the paper because you're not moving forward. Or at least True. not as quickly as you could be. And I suppose... The fact that the DM has to completely rewrite the next four sessions. I'm sorry. It, notwithstanding. <laughs> no, no. You're he's, welcome. He's happy to do that. Despite what's about to come. I've oh. already managed to get a shard out of the Imperial City and into your collective possession. So as much as you might keep insisting that I don't, you don't need me. I think we're not being honest with each other, are we? Ted, we didn't say we don't need you. We didn't say we do need you. We said that asking, demanding we're your minions and demanding all of our stuff with giving nothing in return is not a good scientific tactic. Well, actually, I've given quite a bit in return. I've offered to share a summary of my work. I've promised one of your compatriots she'll be the second reality fixed. I'm not sure what you want from me, and perhaps it's time for he that will always be feared to remind right, you... Buns. That he is he who will always be feared. You know they call you honey buns, right? I 
believe our conversation has ended. You are free to try to escape this mall alive if you can. Else, one of you had best issue an apology. Yeah. Uh, goodbye. Yep. I've been out of the theater setting up a camera somewhere. <laughs> the camera you, that we got You somewhere. hear the clang. Followed by a large series of whooping sounds. Kate, so Katie's Katie is still in there, and like, she, is he like actively doing anything right now? Him? Uh huh. Yeah, he pulled a device out of his pocket with a big red button on it, mm -hmm. which he pushed. Oh, he did actually push it. Okay. Well, you, you can try to stop Sorry. him. I'll try and stop I'll, him. I'll give you oh, an yeah, action no. too. Oh yeah, no, I'll I'll definitely try. And stop yeah, him. yeah. I would like I didn't realize as soon as anything Sorry. comes out. <laughs> He's going to match Sam a little bit with a lost arm. <laughs> yep. Right? Okay. The three of you can easily gang pile him. I will not make you roll. Okay. Yeah, we're going to take the take Yeah, the it's just like overpowering him and taking the, the yeah. thing away. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'm guessing that like, Aveline and I are the ones that are like holding him. Like one of us has his hands, and the other has his feet. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at him and go, bad gnome, bad. That is not the way you play nicely. <laughs> so do I or do I not? Apparently you open? don't. Okay. <laughs> and I am setting up a camera. Get a big doom button and be like, bolt. Yeah. <laughs> like we'd be like, no. <laughs> I'm not in there anymore. I've had it with this guy. So I went yeah. and set am setting up the camera so that we can go to this university for um, Elena. <laughs> so, since we have him there, like, mm -hmm. Katie, Katie just doesn't understand how, why this guy is acting the way that he is at all. She just doesn't, like, all of this talk about, like, hypotheses and mm -hmm. all this is just way, way above her head. And so, she she's just like racking her brains trying to figure out how like why is he so unwilling to work <laughs> with us well now now she's like well you know we're holding him hostage but <laughs> um so thank you rasha by the way oh cheers um so i think she would look down at him and say ted we are not trying to take any glory away from you. Yes, you are. That's all you've talked about. You've talked about how my work doesn't matter. You'll figure it out on your own. I firmly request that you just try to leave alive and figure it out on your own. Which we will do, but we, we understand that you... I'm trying to do this as Katie because there's so much that she did, that she would not understand. <laughs> um, I understand that you know so much about this shard and everything that is happening. But quite honestly, you're a jerk. <laughs> and you are not nice. And I know that that may not mean anything to you. But no one will, we do not want to work with you. We are not your minions. We have something you want. And I have something you want more. I don't, I don't know if that is true. He you may have the knowledge to make it work, but that is something, knowledge is something that can be gained, can be learned. You assume much of others. How long is your friend going to suffer without the person she loves? It help. Now, Rob will also point out to Pond, he has not yet made her role to resist a persuasion check yet. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Rob's doing that somewhat on purpose? Yeah. Rob's patience She's definitely might listening. run out. <laughs> no. How do you know? Uh -uh. 
How do I know what? That my theories are correct? No, I won't understand that regardless, genuinely. How do you know I have someone back at home that I love? Everyone does. No, you know too many details. You've said too much. I can see it in your eyes. Is it that obvious I'm gay? Because I don't always read Insight that way. Insight check. Insight <laughs> check. Blink. From the Actually, he, he blinks. He's like, oh. Oh. Did not know that. You, you said she. I think she meant she, that. She, you. Someone you love. You said that I miss her as in a person, as in my fiance, who is a woman. You suggested that, which is a detail that I don't know how you know. This party doesn't know it. I did. <sighs> Who's the first event you're bringing back? You said second, and you said yours is going to be the last. Oh, the first one is the one that brought the gnolls here. They're scary. Why? Because it will save lives. Not that any of you seem to care about that. Not that you seem to care about the war that these gnolls caused on people who may not have all been bad. We watched them tear apart people, almost tear apart us, and you don't seem to care about that. I had no idea they were doing those things. <clears throat> There's a lot that you seem to be blind for. And yes, I, I desperately want to go home. I, what more than anything. Do? I have offered you quite a bit, considering that the four of you broke in here. Or is this, is this how this works? You're the new new blades, storming in, threatening people with weapons, demanding they do. Will you manacle me too once you finally put me down? Chain Can me I to a table until him? I unlock it. Can I slap him? You totally can it's slap him. not hard. Him. Just right across the face. Yes, you can. You By are the way, hysterical. You are sliding listening. into, if you are a good alignment, you may have to update your character sheet soon. Yeah. <laughs> really don't I really don't know about leave. that. This guy has has is kind of feeling evil to me since we walked in here with his intentions. The way okay. he talks. So Rob's, Rob, like Rob, Rob, Rob's gonna call a DM's evil. timeout here for a second. Rob's calling a DM timeout. Okay. I'm not getting you have come into his space. He was condescending. Yeah. And you have manhandled him beat him and threatened him with violence well he threatened us make not, it out of here alive not until after swords were drawn so you have come no, in we didn't draw swords yes did we? pond did or aveline did you have come in highly oh, that was aggressive right the though, wasn't it? demanded he treat yeah, you as equals nice. <laughs> i forgot and some insulted him <laughs> so to be fair you have been the aggressors in this situation, and the DM is a little confused as to what y'all hope to get out of it, because he'll he can rewrite this. Eric will understand. He can rewrite this, but Rob is really shocked as a DM <laughs> that you are being this aggressive and violent. Okay, I think what happened is okay. I know I know for Sib that I have forgotten some of last week. Okay. Then I thought once we got in and discovered he was there, I didn't think we threatened him. That was kind of where we ended it. This one has felt very much like he's been very condescending and we've been trying to get around it, not knowing how to get around it with him. So I think it's been a communication issue. Okay. And then yeah. it escalated when he, because we, we tried feel like I extended like a lot of leave. olive branches like shit. We, oh, you know about the crystal. Well, if you want to work I with us, feel like, yeah. let's share. And it was like, no, you are our <laughs> min, you are my, <laughs> my minion. You give me the crystal now <clears throat> and you don't get to know anything. And it was like, 
<laughs> well, and no. he's been he's been backpedaling on that steadily. In I fact, didn't, I, uh, more than more than twice he has said, "I will give you the summary of everything. Send two of you back to your own realities." And I'm like, I just want to be sure that you are comfortable closing this 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 avenue off, because it's kind of illogical for him to do any more with you. I don't right. think we I think we really don't want to close the avenue off. Okay. But I think we don't know how to continue it because everything Okay. I think what we're taking from it, which is probably not what you're putting down, but it is where <laughs> our minds are, is that he wants us to give him everything, he wants us to be his minions, which I like on this world is insulting. And he <laughs> wants credit for everything, which we really don't care about the credit well... for anything. <laughs> Well, okay, like, so we, don't, we don't care about the credit. I think it was more just one, his approach made him immediately unlikable. And so then it just became a situation of, well, we're going after the same, we're trying to find the same thing. But then when someone continuously cut, talks down to you and is like, minion, 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 like, I want my name to be on the top of the paper, blah, blah, blah. Like, and obviously, like, I'm trying to play this as a character who doesn't know anything about science, who doesn't like, you know. And so what we're getting is this really unlikable character that, like, Katie wouldn't want to be around. Like, doesn't matter how, how smart he is. If he's going to be an asshole, then we don't want to be around him. That's where we're at at this point. And then we were trying to walk out and avoid this. And then he was going to, like, call the gnolls on us. So that's kind of where... We were. Maybe there was more backpedaling and we just weren't picking up on it. Okay. I will apologize for the slap. That was out of line. But that's, I thought well, he that, was getting hysterical. Fair. I thought maybe um, we'd calm it down and restart. Do we <laughs> that's why I just needed, my character needed to leave because I feel like I extended a lot of olive branches of like, okay, you said that you would introduce us to your work and then you brought me to a room of notebooks that make no sense and I ask questions and you just say, oh, go read a million notebooks. I'm never going to explain this to you. So it's just kind of like, okay, you don't want to work with me. Okay, now, now taking from the other side of this, if you have a lot of knowledge and four people break into your home and threaten you, how much do you give back? I mean, he's not going to tell you how to do this at the point of a sword. And he's not going to walk you through his research so that you can murder him and take it. No, but it, it I feel like there were there were no threats until he started like he kind of like I I feel like we were not threatening. We were really trying to like Okay. Hold on. Like what what research? What are you even talking about? And it was like, "Oh, you're too stupid to ever know. Just give me this crystal. No, you right. can trust he... me." And I did an insight and he's hiding something. I clearly don't trust him if he's not even going to explain something to us, which he on multiple occasions yeah. refused. So I have just checked out. As well, a player, I'm just saying that's where the character's at. I, at I understand this point. that. And and they're clearly things were not well articulated because he more than once said he would explain it. Yeah, but it was like, I'll explain it once you give me this. No, and once I you feel promise like... to be nice to me. I... Oh, that was not... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, was not... I didn't a good faith personally. promise to participate. That That is, if that's yeah. what he was saying, that, but Those were his me, exact I... words, actually. A I good faith heard, promise. I, pr I promise to show you this research if you give us, give me the crystal. That's what I heard. Yeah, you needed to agree. His, his. I mean, I, I thought I was pretty clear that, his, that in the role play he was saying, you know, hey, you need to, like, yeah, I need something from you. And again, at this point, he's I guess not, that's he's not going to play along at the point of a sword. And I'm not yeah. sure how we're going to go. I mean, I just want to be sure you guys want to close this off. No, I, I think when you say, I need something from you, I just assumed you meant he was saying, I need the crystal if we're going to move forward. I didn't think the something yeah. meant an agreement. I just assumed the something was the crystal he kept talking about. Okay. I think that's not where we all went. 
Yeah, yeah. I think our so, mind all went to he just wants the crystal basically to use us, and that's right. why we became on the defense. Yeah, and I so, think I think honestly the tone didn't help because we have yeah. all been in that situation. Which again, if he's supposed to be an, an unlikable character, that's totally fine. Yeah, but it did not it did not play well. Well, because we immediately went on all the defensive because we've can all I, met this kind of person. Can I have a real real moment? Rob is the white male at the table who's role-playing a dickish male who just told a woman that she won't ever figure things out. And then Rob it's... was surprised that people were reading way more into what was being said than he intended. Yeah. And I think it's I just had a moment of... upsetting. I should have read the table way better than before now. <laughs> and I think you're right in that... Um, well, yeah. But I think not, uh, not upsetting in a have... way that like I am personally offended. Right. It's just right. that yeah. like upsetting in a way of like I I don't know how to extend an olive branch that this person's going to understand if that's the attitude that's coming back. So that's why as a character I am frustrated. But that's me. No, oh, that's yeah. No, that's good. Um, and something else too. I mean, no, no, that's true too. Um, I'm also watching our, our Zoom chat too, and nobody has called yellow yet, besides me. Which and it was a good call. It was a good call. Which yeah. I well, no, I also want to say that too as a DM. If anybody wandering by, going, is this the game of D and D, or are they just talking through plot points? Um, <laughs> I do want to remind people that we do have our safety tools in place, and I've been like, if you see me lancing way to the side, that's me looking at the Zoom chat for anything that I need to know about this dialogue and this role play that we've got going, um, because this is the most charged we've had role play at the table in a while ever. Can we I go back I... to where Pond's character was banging the random girl? <laughs> like that <laughs> was, was way confused. easier. Like if he was an evil character, you, or like he was trying to trick us somehow. You played him great. Right. <laughs> um, so I guess that's why I didn't want to pull a yellow card because I don't want you to tell us like, hey, he's actually a bad guy. Like, I don't want well, that. Like, <laughs> Gerald all over again. In, in hindsight, yeah, <laughs> look, looking back about 45 minutes, when, I, when you made the insight check, I should have been more clear about what he was hiding because you he, there is stuff he has not said, obviously. But right. the level at which you have gone, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, is a little more than the insight check should have sent you at. I, I guess I wasn't trying to say I don't think he knows what he's doing. I think that he does, but it's the fact that he is so blinded by he's like, I'm right, I know what I'm doing, you don't know what you're doing, give me what I need. It's like, oh, I don't trust you because you're not willing to listen to other people or collaborate or even divulge what's happening. And right. if, if someone needs something that badly or that desperately, I feel like they would be willing to work with you like mm -hmm. we were willing to work with them kind of deal, but. And to be fair, he did start doing that after, but this was like after you had left. Yeah, so that's after why. After Sam I... had left. And like at that point, you know, we're trying to play true to our characters mm -hmm. and it's hard because Sam, you're the only one that like understands the science part of it. And so you left the dumb characters to kind of be like, <laughs> well. You're not being very nice. We, you. You're <laughs> not a very nice person. And like, that was all that we had, like, that's all that we had left to go on. And I was like, and because we like, yeah, of course we want to get Aveline and myself back home. But if we don't understand the science, it comes down to, is this a person that I would want to work with? And if the answer is no, then we're just going to leave them. But that's the trick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I guess the way, the reason that I left was because my character was like, okay, I don't, I don't yeah. understand. I don't know. And we already have a lead to go to the university. We could probably find somebody. It might take longer. Yeah. But if they're more willing to work with us, then it'd be worth it. Like, I, I don't know if this guy's trying to open a convergence and let in a horde of evil things. Like, I don't know what he wants to do with this crystal. He's working with gnolls anyway. That doesn't feel great. Um. Yeah, I also think that, like, 
his natural character is very like so for Aveline, for example, um, like she really wants to get back home, like almost more than anything. But his behavior is almost identical to people that have like bullied her people all their life, which is like, I want my name at the top of the paper. I want all the credit for everything. It's all about ego. So in like a moment, she's just like, this is not a good person, like, and just hot headed and just like, that's why I'm going to threaten you type of deal. And (laughs) that escalated everything, obviously. But I think, yeah, when someone doesn't understand the science, like, for example, yeah, the three of us left over. And at the end of the day, it's like, two people who want to get home, but have very high, like sense of morals um, from a guy who is, and a teenager also, by the way, (laughs) um, and have approached this guy who has pretended to be a God in front of a cleric who is all about his ego and stuff like this and has like kind of this arrogance to him. I think that's why there is such a contrast immediately. Yes. I was taking a moment too to reflect on how much easier life would have been if I just said, okay, roll, roll persuasion. This is a good conversation, what? though. It's a really good yeah, conversation. And a great <laughs> illustration of using the yellow card. Yeah. 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 Because we've talked about it a lot, but I don't think we've ever had to use it before. And this is really good. The DM's not supposed to be the one using it. <laughs> you know no, what? I'm glad you did. Uses it. I'm really glad you did, because I think that was a really good example of how our communication just wasn't working. Yeah. And it's good because we really didn't want, I don't think we want to end this. Yeah, because we don't I think no. it want to. Very it just much. felt like and, we were budding and there was nowhere for okay. us to go. Well, there I, was no give. Yeah. Right. And then it, it just it just hardened the resolve on both sides, it yeah. felt like. Well, and so. that's, that is a bit of a, a, a kerfluffle that, that again, per, if, if, we, if I just said everybody roll persuasions and the winner, get, you know, high score gets what they want. Um, because there is a, the truth is both sides have to offer something, yeah. and, and yeah. to be completely frank, so far y'all haven't offered anything. Well, except we said maybe that we would to work, work with, with and yeah. bring a shard but, to the table, which well, is the whole of the research. We said we now, know to, where one is. To, to, to we be clear, yeah, said we you haven't. also haven't. Yeah. Like again, one thing that could keep putting in the back of your minds as players, yeah. he has he are asking him to give you stuff, including an understanding of four years of research for a promise of maybe giving him the shard. So well, kind of file that well, in the back in there. Right. But the whole, like, how tonight yeah. started was literally him, like, one yeah. saying his name and then just him talking. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, we didn't even have a chance to really say, like, you know, what do you want? He was basically like, all right, minions. All right. Look, I am the big bad like (laughs) now go give me what i want and then away with you like treating us like gnolls you know what the the perfect analogy is the kid that joins the group project late and tries to take over everything that you've been doing and you're like excuse you where have you been for two weeks we've already been doing this and like (laughs) this is such a better way though and you're like but then they also felt like what we were doing too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wanted, yeah. That's yeah. exactly yeah. how he yeah. feels. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's already done all the work and the four cool kids just showed up at the table. And so we're gonna get our names on the project too, right? Right. So I definitely think that we didn't <laughs> we didn't communicate well because I think our goal was to talk with him back and forth about because <sighs> we haven't learned very much. Uh, yeah, I and also uh, Sam doesn't really care about her name on anything. She's not like a, like seriously, she doesn't like participate in the scientific community. She's like a rogue person studying stuff in a Seven Eleven. It's not like she's being <laughs> like. She doesn't really like to be in the spotlight because what she does should not be seen by people anyway. Um, so it's just like yeah, kind of like mad sight. I guess it's more so just like I feel like I can't trust, but the, he's doing but it for knowledge. He's doing it for rapport and yeah. for the sake of his grandchildren, which we realize that now, like he wants his name to be in how his posterity, right? Posterity, yeah. you know, introduces himself, yeah. which I think that's perfectly fine. I, okay. I think just he came off 
so strong and yep. just so like this is this is what I am if you aren't going to like if you're not going to give this to me, because I totally expected him to be like, oh, well, you're not going to give it to me, then I'm just going to try to take it. And then we go into combat. And then yeah. it's like, that's how I honestly <laughs> totally thought that that's how that was going to go. And then he started throwing out like scientific mumbo jumbo. And Katie's like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> so we so, kill it. Yeah. And so like oh, as a player, I'm just kind of like, I can't, she's not. She's she's a hammer. She hammers <laughs> like so. Well, actually, you uh, really think so? What the story is really played out? <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> I think I think I needed that. <laughs> so, there's a there's kind of a couple of ways we could okay. yep. reset. Maybe mm -hmm. we could try doing an insight check now. And saying that, like, maybe he's like, well, and then I'm, maybe try and restart here, or maybe. Here's where I'm at. Or... Here's where I'm at. Sam is done setting up the device in the hallway. Yes. You guys have a manhandled. You can make decisions about what you want to do. I will, as the DM, I will tell you, if you don't give him something, he's not going to give you anything. And the DM will tell you he has a lot. Right. Including a fast track. Now, will Sam figure out how to work the convergence crystal? Absolutely. Is going to the university the best route to do that? Maybe. Bear in mind that it's inside the Imperial City, which means it's full of people in a massive empire. And Rob, as the DM, is a pinch surprised Aveline's a cool with that plan. I did send you a message on Discord about the thought process behind that, but I wasn't sure if you saw it. I'll just, I'll say it out loud, which is essentially because Aveline is traditionally very hot-headed in a moment. <laughs> Everything that he's going to say is going to, she's going to like in the middle of the night be like, fuck, I made the wrong decision. And essentially be like, we need, we need this guy and we almost killed him and I miss my fiance. <laughs> I did not. I've been watching the Zoom. I was not watching Discord. Sorry. I'll That's use Zoom okay. next time, but yeah. <laughs> so, I can only watch so many safety tools at once, guys. <laughs> well, that was more like informative for you when we started getting into this. I was like, oh, this might be helpful. But yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll let you go where you want to go from here. If you guys want to storm out, you can storm out. If you want to give him something, you can give him something. At this point, he will have made it very clear that he needs something to share his work with you. Could I backpedal and instead of hitting him, could I go like I'm going to and put my hand on his shoulders and say, look, we just want to talk. Can we talk? He'll look back. I've been talking. Okay. But have you been listening? Could well, we... To be completely Try again. honest, you came into my home. One of your party, who I see now returning, insisted she could match all of my work. I was threatened with a weapon. Aveline just does that. She just takes out her sword sometimes. I'm currently I really do. Held. I have threatened my fiancé by knife point at one point. It's fine. And then he kind of softens. By the way, I don't recall using which pronouns. And if it was embarrassing to you that I used the one I did, I apologize. No, I was just curious why you did that. I assumed you might have had more information, and I am quick to act on that. And I mean, at this point, since things have de-escalated, we're putting <laughs> him down. We still have the freaking red button, though. Oh, yeah. tiny red Someone button. has this, the red button. But, <laughs> I think I do. Like, we're putting it down. So I believe we all want the same thing. I think that we are talking and not listening. We know where the shard is. We know that you can help us and that we can help you. We are not your minions. 
but we can be your partners if you are willing to work with us and us with you. My name is at the top of the paper. Your name can be at the top of the paper. I don't even want my name on the paper. I don't care about that, but we do not, we're not beneath you. I never we said you're be beneath me. Min you're smart guy. Well, it's a term of endearment. Not here. And more to the point, and while I appreciate everyone is attempting to take a calmer stance, I have to have some power and control the situation. Or we could, and I am willing to do this, spend the next four years bringing all of you up to speed on my research. I don't know what control you want. Well, if I say we need to go somewhere, we go there. If I need something, we, need, we get it. I don't mind. It's fine. But we need to understand why. I do not oh. blindly follow orders. And not in some 10-year-long explanation where I will die before we know why. Just tell us. Because truthfully, I don't know you. And I am hoping that you are not here to fool us. As you can see, we don't like that. But please treat us as equals. We don't really like the name Minions, no. We're just, just scratch that off. If you hey, we're really supplies. sorry we broke in. We didn't know you were here. We thought to it was be covered fair, in Noel's. We didn't know this was someone's home. We were told that you were considered a god, which... Oh, yes, they think I'm a god out there. Yes, we figured that, uh, which we will talk about later. That's not a discussion to be had right now. Um, however, what we all want, what we all want is to figure out this shard and what it can do to send Aveline home, to send you home, to send those who want to go home, home. Well, actually, I've already figured that out. Maybe I come off as a little bit full of myself, but I think it's justifiable. You are very smart. I can. And again, you know, if we really, it's possible for the research to be recreated. It's all there. but I do think I would like some good faith statement. At the very least, an apology. You can get me home? Yes. Then I'm sorry that I threatened you with a knife or a very large blade. <laughs> you say knife, and he's, he's like, oh, what? <laughs> it's like three times the size of a fencing knife. <laughs> Just a little dagger, you know, a little more about it. It was your fiancé, you threatened like with a knife, letter. you threatened him with a great sword. Just, you know. Yeah, it's just a yeah, butter knife. Um, I am willing to also <laughs> extend an olive branch, but I am uncomfortable in participating in anything that I don't know what we're doing. And I feel like as a fellow scientist, you would also agree that being blind in an experiment is never an optimal situation to be in. Fair. Thank you. And I will hand him a Twinkie. This is my wow. olive branch. Okay, he has no he clue why that's relevant, out. but Rob's like, okay, that's a major gesture. <laughs> If you ever feel sleepy, this will keep you up for at least two and a half hours. Oh, you don't need that. Here. And he pulls out this yellow concoction. Is, he, Katie, is that the Katie stuff he showed us before? Imme immediately just kind of like, no, 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 no. You, you mix the no. syrup that they have stockpiled in the back. Oh, God. Syrup, water. you say. You should see oh, what I've no. turned the syrup into. And I uh, turn around and show Mr. Freezy. Katie's literally just standing there like this, just like. <laughs> we all gone wrong in a different <laughs> way. Is it Mountain Dew? Is it Red Bull? 
Oh. Is it brown? <laughs> no, no, it's it's jolt. <gasps> oh, good lord! <laughs> jolt. Is the water cafe, uh, coffee Joe? It's something. Regnal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob needs a second to recalibrate. Uh, Did we take a quick break? Uh, we have momentum on our side. If nobody has to pee, Rob doesn't want to go that break that long. No, nope, no, nope, we don't have to. That's cool. Okay. I can show you. This way. And as he leads you back into the theater you came in, he grabs like a box of popcorn. They're all lined up nice and neat. Take one. And then he pauses. We have a problem. If I am to entrust you with the secret of my plan, how do I know you're not going to betray me and murder me in my sleep? Because that wouldn't help us. But if you know I the mean, plan, I could say, you don't need I me. Could, I could say you, you would try, but no, that's not, well, we're not. I would say, no, we have no desire to do that. We've come to you now that we know you can help us for help. But I'm not sure if you'll believe that more than why it's messy. We don't need to. I don't. See, I don't know what to say to make you believe us. So, I believe um, that I could trust minions with the knowledge. Oh, my God. What they is the not... most insulting phrase you have to call somebody on your plane? Gully dwarf. Uh, a gully dwarf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So minion is the equivalent of gully dwarf. Hmm. So could we try friends? Those usually get blown up within the first six months of research. Okay, no, those are... You're mixing up the words. Uh, yeah, so usually during research, you blow up your lab techs or assistants <laughs> or, um, oh, what's, what's the word? Sam, what's the word for people you experiment on? Things you experiment on. Uh, guinea pigs, I believe. Oh, yeah, 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 it's guinea pigs. Hmm. <laughs> Technicians. <laughs> Wouldn't you argue that if for some reason we did want to kill you after learning this knowledge, we would just go along with being called minions for the sake of ending the conversation? Us arguing to not be called minions means that we respect you and your opinion on us. Hmm. Still don't feel that's a great sign of trust. Trust has to start somewhere. Katie, mm, you're better at this. <laughs> um. Okay, so Katie... Oh, okay, sorry. I'm trying to come up with... So, Okay. Would it be enough if... Uh, I, I know that on your planet and on this planet, the uh, the ritual of swearing an oath is different. But if you if you and I were to do an oath um, uh, of from my culture and maybe from your culture, would that be enough? Sounds like a lot of work. It does not. At least not from Just eat some popcorn and sit down. End. Okay. And he has, he gets you all seated. And the chandelier slowly fades over exactly 5.4 seconds into darkness. Check uh, the Discord for a new Jamboard to open. Uh, and the screen lights up with white letters. Living with convergence events and returning the world to normal if practical. Prepared by, and then his full name, 
well, actually, as much of his name as he could fit on the individual piece of plastic he has in front of the screen. <laughs> he goes to the next slide. And you, you hear booming through the speakers. There are multiple realities. Because he does have a couple of cantrips. He can do that. Press the digitation for the win. No, thaumaturgy. We are currently, person A is currently on Reality Prime. Person B is on not Reality Prime. When a convergence event happens, slide three, a hole is created in Reality Not Prime, which lines up with a piece of Reality Prime. So, according to the research, when that piece begins to fall, what remains of the Not Reality Prime? And, a bigger question, what happens to person A who was where person B appeared. According to all of the work that has been completed thus far, reality, reality not prime cannot simply cease to exist. It must therefore be in some form of suspended animation awaiting its reunion with the original reality piece. And as realities collide, energy is created. How do we know the energy is equated? This equation shows clearly that generation of a near infinite potential of energy. Sam has a chance to study that. Yeah, can uh, do I have to roll or something or um are we are we on slide 5? We're on 5. Okay, yeah. Um it mostly checks out, maybe. I, would I be able to tell theoretically that this could be done? Obviously, uh, I have no idea. It looks like um, sp like you drop SpaghettiOs and turn it into <laughs> black and white. But is this in? Would Sam? How much? Th how much time did Sam spend at a blackboard doing energy creations? I mean, I have a plus five to Arcana. I mean, I don't no. Know. Gnome trickster birthday parties are a thing, man. No, I mean, I, I don't think I sat at a blackboard, but I definitely think that, like, my family has <laughs> done a lot of math. They built huge stuff. It looks okay-ish. And then he's can on to the give, next slide. Can you give me, like, the, like, what the E and the little E and the squiggly D maybe stand for? Uh, really advanced mathematics. Okay. It's it's very theoretical. But the big thing at the end is that the energy released is potentially infinite. So this is just the math of an actual... Convergence event. Okay, so it's not what he's saying. It's the actual first event. This is the math, theoretically, for the first event. Yes. Okay. Which then takes us to a convergence shard. Normally, anything designed in order to encapsulate something, for example, like a soul, so a soul shard, could, if in the presence of a convergence event, instead capture that a portion of that energy released during a convergence event itself. This would create a green glow within it, representative of the convergence event itself, as well as a luminescence directly tied in intensity to the amount of energy released based on the proportional number of shards in the proximity of said event. I drew that one. Thus, this is a very pretty picture. If we can get a conver convergence shard to the foci of a convergence event, we can then release the energy within that crystal and with a very particular guidance through a very specific device, return that convergence location to its original non-prime reality, therefore restoring the non-prime reality into existence. Yes, you in the front. I have two questions. How do you know you've got the right not prime reality? And do the prime realities get stuck in the shard? Making a shard for the, the event? The energy is trapped, but not the reality itself. How do you know that you've got the right energy for the right not prime reality to go back then? Energy is reality agnostic. 
Whether or not I hit you with a hammer or a fist, you are still experiencing a change in energy. And it hurts. Speaking of which, I now notice I have a bruise. Thank you. You're welcome. We will save more questions until later. Now, I have, however, noticed that there is a small discrepancy. When the energy is released, it has to be released through some kind of an opening in that chart. But, as you can clearly see from these equations, that the only way in order to maintain a non-infinite release of energy is for the radius of the openings to be less than zero. Which cannot be done. If I put a hole in something, it has to have a hole. I mean, physically, yes, but I've seen arcane magic. But wait, there's more. You see, all things are made of things. That is a true statement. And those things are made of things. And those things are made of even smaller things. So the right. key is to split things at that lowest level. Therefore, we would be splitting them with a radius of zero. And allow them to have a controlled finite energy release. Volumes 645 through 1102 clearly show that this will work. Hey, Sip, is there anything in that history, perhaps, that you might know about splitting atoms at a very small level on Earth that did not go well, perhaps? I can roll a history. <laughs> Depends on how... Oh. Perhaps maybe you can um, save us I, right now? I rolled a 17, so I would totally know about the whole, like, splitting atom <laughs> going poorly thing. Um... Yeah, there were some stories of people who, who had problems with that. Yeah, we, we've, we've tried that. That, historically, the tales tell is a bad thing. We are not going to be creating a create, creating true fission. We are simply pour, boring a hole. Save your questions until the end of the presentation, please. Now, as a statement, but we'll when the energy is released, this patent pending... Specialized design, shown in part, can be used with proper training to guide the energy release in order to move the reality back to its original state. It is an absolutely essential part of it, and at this stage, to be completely clear, I do not trust you with more details in this early design. Oh, I, I agree. Yes, more details are definitely too much, too much information. <laughs> And then the light slowly comes up. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, DM, I would like to do some type of internal. <laughs> can you, can you just tell me if, if by what you're saying would say, or what he is saying, would Sam think that this is something that is plausible, or like Molly the player think that this could literally blow up the continent. Because you the, 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 you lost me at we want to split an atom. You're not splitting an atom, you're boring a hole through an atom. <laughs> it sounds oh. rather similar. See how that's better? <laughs> Can, can, is there some some type of? Um, yeah, go ahead and roll me a straight intelligence, and then sure. then please don't roll badly. Sure. We've got a book of fate, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't roll good. Tw I mean, twelve. Is that good okay. enough? That's good enough that I don't have to completely risk derailing the game. Okay. <laughs> We throw whatever rerolls we need to with that. You know, what's yeah. funny, it's like, Do I, I need to reroll? It's almost no, no, nine. No. What's funny okay. is I, th this is another DM DM real moment. Yes. I can oh we got you got you got a bonus from Rasha in chat. It's okay. like I could just say, you Thank know, you. but I'm like, you're gonna roll. But then it's like if she rolls bad, she's gonna say, That's Yes, so this could cause a massive nuclear explosion and I want to stop the party from doing that, which would just ruin the game derail the game even more. 
and I'm the stupid DM that's going to make you roll to derail my own game. I got, I'm done after this. This is my last session. Don't you dare. Oh, I, don't, I am not trying to make things difficult. I, I am legitimately trying to find no, out no, no, no. if, like, I... You're not. Rob would okay. be by making you roll. <laughs> Rob could just tell you. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 I, think... I don't feel as bad. No, but... no, no, no. And I think I can handle Tiff, and I'll have plenty of warning before the other three make it to the house. You are throwing fantasy math at an art major I who's know. pretending to be smart, and you, you we're just really like... are just. <laughs> I mean, you lost me at I'm I'm gonna go a thousand notebooks that I've spent twelve hours on, and I've been here four days longer. I don't know what that means. I think I think he's been here like eighty seven days, I, but like I've. I just figured out that number. And I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Like four so. years. It's four years. Yeah, it's yeah. four years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay. So. <laughs> and also, I rolled the same thing. Well, oh, no, you got a plus. You had an add to the roll. It wasn't a re-roll. It was a straight plus oh, five. Sorry. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Cool. What was hey, it? Yeah. Sip, so se sip, seventeen. Just gonna lean over to Katie and be like, "Yeah, so we do that." <laughs> They were very pretty pictures. How did he get them? I guess magic. Just <laughs> yeah, magic. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've never it does look like pie. Thing. It is theoretically possible pie pie. that this could be bad, but the math seems to support the idea that if you can get that radius to zero, you can put a hole through the shard. More importantly, if his math was right and you had attempted to open the shard with anything but a radius zero hole you would have released all of the energy in it. Right. Okay. So you've been walking around with a nuclear bomb. Right. And now my brother, Sean Metal, has this. Right. Right. That's good to know. And remember, at one point, Sam was reaching for a hammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I did hit it with a hammer at one point. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm right. not going to say DM's that. DM's going to give him a go. Yeah, right. Sam was right on top of this one. <laughs> um sorry that was have... that was unnecessary i do apologize can it's fine i still am this is all beyond me can i can i just like bring up like i don't i don't want to say it in like a bad way to him but can i bring up like the oh you i see that your equation says this have you accounted for the possibility of explosion but can yes. you he hear that scientifically I would like to sound smart here. Uh, yes, you totally. Okay. Actually, that's not a bad question to ask just like that. Okay, good. He's like, yes, that's why we're boring a hole. We are not splitting it. Now, there is the remains of a location where study was completed prior to the first convergence event. And I'm aware that they have what is called an atom collider. If we use that and the convergence shard and we properly power both and we channel the energy from the shard through the patent pending device I have created and know how to use, we can return a reality. I mean, has there been any actual practical application of boring a hole into an atom? Because it seems like the risk of splitting one is very high. Oh. I think so. Can you can you give me, in terms of percentage, risk to reward factor here? Like, are we talking 60, 40? Oh, it's a guarantee. We'll be perfectly fine. No scientist in the world deals in absolutes. That's a good thing I'm not a scientist. What? I am an inventor. What? And he holds up this, this column of lenses. See? I invented it. Patent pending. You can't have it or look at it. I've learned to... I don't think I want to. Um, but that's... 
cute. <laughs> Katie! So. I'm trying to be nice! You're doing great! Thank you! I think she's trying not to hit him is more the point. <laughs> Katie, help stop me from me. So, Ted. <laughs> this is just so out of my own and Katie's like realm of understanding at all. She's just like, Adam's. Why are two Adams hitting one another? Like, why? Who is Adam? Do we need to go get Adam and bring him here? You know, like. <laughs> so I guess what Katie would say. Oh Lord. Okay. Um. So Ted, what? How can we help you? Aside from the crystal, what else do you need to make? patent penned thing we just need for you or me or us i should come with you you could learn so much on the travel so could you mutual learning it's always good hmm maybe learn something new every day it's good we we just need to acquire the particle accelerator at this place of learning. The the what? The thing in the basement of the ruins. Okay. Thing in basement of ruins. That thing. Question. Yes. Are we doing this process there? Or do we have to bring it back here or well this is not the center of the convergence else. event that i would want to begin the experiment on okay they but, have individual centers well every event had a location that it came in at sure yeah and i believe that the one that brought the knolls here is not far we could meet there would that not use this crystal though this is like a one time. Oh, yes. Beg pardon, but why would we waste this on the knolls? Well, there is a non zero possibility that I am slightly wrong about the convergence events actually reuniting and not mutually destroying themselves. And as much as I want to send your friend back, I think that our first effort should probably not be with her reality as if my calculations are off which i'm fairly confident they're not but if it would be perhaps tragic to permanently destroy from all existence everyone that did not come through that event and possibly those that did right this is why we don't deal in absolutes when we ask for percentages because there's n guarantees do not exist right so the what you're saying now make sense to me what you said before it did not but this does make sense um where okay we go test this on the knolls i love a good uh test test run sure where then would we get a, this crystal seemed to take so much to get do you have ideas of where others are well, we could have the Nulls continue to get them. That does not seem like the best idea since they didn't really get it for you this time. They had to intimidate another group of people who then didn't even really get it to you. They got it lost to us, which is why we're here now. Yes, so now I have direct access to one. Plan worked perfectly. Not, not entirely. But in acquiring because... another one. Well... People died for this. People died to for in the exchange of us getting this crystal. Hmm. I think I'm gonna make like a like a type of diagram equation to show like how that how this went wrong and all the variables that maybe he didn't see, like the loss of life and the 
the fact that too many people now know of this. It's just a whiteboard moment. <laughs> him, us. Like it, it's like it fold it folds out and down and it's like I'm gonna try to break this down into into mathematical terms. I think this might be useful. Oh, a valid point. However, why don't we worry about that once we know this works? We get the particle accelerator, we get the crystal, we get to the convergence of foci, we send the gnolls back, and then we go find another shard and we send your friend back. Assuming it works, which it will. How will we know it works after it does the thing? Because if my, if, as, as you saw, the reality not prime, which was placed over reality prime, it covered reality prime. So if we do this correctly at that foci, reality prime should be restored. How would we have to be in the center, though? correct to yes. make this work how will we not send ourselves to this other plane if uh, we have to be in the center there's a setting on the pet and petting device there's a setting on the device that's never been used to guarantee we are not transported to a plane that may or may not exist yes you, you turn the knob it, it determines what the radius of protection is said you wanted an adventure right sam with time, Did I? I might trust you with more knowledge of how the device works. But to be really honest, I do have to hold something back, lest you murder me in my sleep, as no, was no. somewhat threatened. You were really stuck on murdering in your sleep, but we, we didn't actually threaten to murder you in your sleep. Just want to clarify that. If I would murder you, it would... You there would will be, be no murder. There is no, there is no murdering. What Katie right said. Right now. What Katie said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Katie's head hurts so much right now. <laughs> Katie is just like, just just wants to hit something with her hammer. Right now. <laughs> so out of curiosity, if you leave this place, what happens if the gnolls know you've left? The gnolls won't know I left. I have a secret door out. Okay. So, but wait, you, but you are their god. You made yourself the god of these gnolls. You cannot just abandon them. Oh, I'll pre-program a couple of messages for the next couple of weeks. They'll never know I was gone. That... That is not okay. Oh. I could stay here. I don't think that'll work either. <laughs> I, mean, I think, I I think we truly like broke NLK. <laughs> I don't know. Top off the water, folks. With this. Uh, I'm just going to lean over and uh, uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure Sam has given us all a stash of Twinkies. So I'm just going to take one and hand it to NLK. Because <laughs> Twinkies fix everything, right? To Katie or to NLK? I mean, Katie, both. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, because I might need one right now, too. Both, both. We'll just send you you know the Simpsons meme of, like, chuckles, I'm in danger? Uh, I feel like Sam is just like... Oh... All Sim can think of is please never let these two date. <laughs> God, <laughs> no. Pretty, I'm pretty sure Sam's thinking that too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So Katie is just going to kind of sigh and just, Ted, you have made yourself the hierarch of this. We were talking to. Um, we were talking to another person who has been watching the gnolls and they used to have a matriarch. What happened? They have one, don't they? Yeah, they do. It's just that the, sh the knoll shaman is now like calling oh. the shots, but you really? are the knoll shaman. He, he, he takes out a notebook and starts drying things down. There's a new person in charge out there? 
It should right, be a so matriarch. I always thought Knowles were matriarchal. They are. They are. But there is a, which we thought was you since Would you're you like to yourself... meet someone? <laughs> no, they're scary. No, don't worry. They're very not scary. But they are very smart like you. And they know about the Knowles. <laughs> Oh, true. She's not saying meet the Knowles. No, oh, he's saying Knowles. meet another person. Oh, Helena. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's go on a, a walk. We were promised to keep you safe and returning. We did set up the camera, right? Like that when yeah, that was already I did done. That. Okay, yeah, I so did we've that. accomplished that part of the mission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not at all what we I need to, I have so many reservations. That's why just, I'm trying to bite us some time. Yeah, so that truly. The two NPCs can talk so that we can talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that because I need a party conversation. I think, Rob, you might have broken everybody. <laughs> I also desperately need to pee. Okay, five <laughs> minutes. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Thank you. <laughs> beat you they get to win okay i can handle that it's a, no. it's a 40 cent bet to me bet five dollars table max all right 80 cent raise oh this is gonna be 80 cents 80 cents is for fools young lady <laughs> oh, all of it I have, 480 get I, out i can't wait to save these He's i have out. a king i have a king get out yes <laughs> you were wondering if i had a king i have a king out. get out out She's gonna go in. She wants. She She's doesn't buy about it. it. She doesn't buy it. Cause she has a four. You think? I think she has an ace four. Yep. So here's the deal. She's in. Some would say she's in. <laughs> oh. Does she have the other king? Yes. She has the other one. Yep. But we have the ten. And we take that pot away from her. Yep. Or yeah. something. So the final decision is you are actually going to load the were rat into the wagon. Apparently. Yes. Let's sell it. I mean, yeah. yeah. When in Baldur's Gate. Yes. <laughs> Not called the wide for nothing. <laughs> All right. We'll eat his friends. We'll, we'll eat his little yes. minions. Yeah. Like when were rat is, is a little, mm, but like the roasted, like the rats that we have charred yeah, via roast ember. rat. I can produce flame. We can get this cooking. It's good. Yeah, like I'm telling you, rat charcuterie. Let's go. Mm. You're swinging again. Oh man, oh, this, this guy. guy. Tough. This guy. What's up with this guy? The, he's what? He... What? This doesn't happen. <laughs> this doesn't happen. All right, we're going. Let's go. Okay. And followed by the smite. Come on. Timber. We got this. I mean, if he doesn't go down now, I don't know. And he, go, he dro finally drops. Yes. And is out of the scrap. Um, gets to the guy in the... Oh no, that whole love interest thing. That's right. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I almost killed him. <laughs> I... Maybe re -roll yeah, re-roll it. Re-roll it. <laughs> the birds yeah, are yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Everyone's in on these... the re-roll. I screwed these birds right. up earlier. We need Come a on. high roll. We got this. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> so um, every time I'm the bard, uh, does not want to be a. I'm really bad at being a bard. That is amazing. Worst bard ever. <laughs> um, yikes! The good news is, see. after this adventure, you can start taking levels of anything else. Anything else? <laughs> what the hell? Um. Okay. Like, why am I, I legit this? have been screaming this entire time. So you know what? What is the health of everybody You're also right now? You're full health. You want to like come right. back and Everyone's full health. Like, no, we're not. 
the rest all of right. us are like highly injured. You're on yeah, the Yeah, we're all cool hurting yeah. pretty bad. Like the jam board bit? says that everybody's. Oh. Oh, refresh. Refresh. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Ember's alive because I just healed for 12. <laughs> Show us that twelve out of forty-one. You, you were, were like literally seeing around on the outside of the circle. Entire like, time, Come weren't join you? Me. I'm full health. <laughs> Y'all, I'm having to take over here. Spot the jam for uh, the thing, and I was just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I think we broke the. He goes in. He does a few loops. He comes back out and beep. Okay, beep once if there's dead bodies in there. Beep twice. No, that doesn't work. All right, beep twice. It... No, that doesn't work. Okay, beep. Oh, screw it. I'm going to see if I can sneak up. <laughs> like, see if I can sneak up and find a widow to kind of like. really the sharpest hack in this box <laughs> I I, yeah that's kind of where i'm going like do we think it's gonna follow us yeah can i'm we sure it will run it yeah i was gonna say can we outrun it or is it like something that's just gonna follow us no matter where we go i don't think we can outrun it i mean it's not gonna come any closer for a bit yeah i agree i, I think we're gonna have to fight well, it we can take, take shelter, shelter in the smoldering ruins Right? I don't know if that's going to help. We it's don't just... know what's in the smoldering ruins. <laughs> well, it could be any worse than this. We could oh, yes, across... it could! <laughs> we could come across, like, another giant creature, and then we're fighting two at the same time. And then but it start... could be, like, Godzilla versus King Kong. So if we run into something even nastier, maybe it won't want to eat us. It'll go after the other thing. thing. Because they're legends and they have to fight. That's how that works. No, or they team up against us. You've had a very fortunate life, haven't you? As you seem to be doing really well with it. Ooh, Matt 20 is Oh my god. Nice. I shattered it. <laughs> wow. Well, you can roll your damage. I don't 25? Because <laughs> I got three sixes? <laughs> Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Why She's hulked that... out. <laughs> rage hard. Yeah, I think you should rage all the time. I think you I should like never rage. not, yeah. Yeah, this, never this not be raging. Well, There's where all two. our good rolls were hiding. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's why they were so bad earlier. We were saving up. But... Stop hitting my friends. <laughs> Oop, wrong They're way. damaged books with that kind of attitude. <gasps> well played. Wow. Having taken a, a holy order of some kind and other oaths. I'm thinking like an elven, like really. S <laughs> that makes a sense. Kung Fu elven monk? Kung Fu elven monk. Yes. Okay. Yes. That meditates a lot. <laughs> I can, I can, yeah. I can live with that. Because elves don't have to sleep as much. So totally right. <laughs> here thank you for coming in my name is rob aka lantern noir we are playing dungeons and dragons uh, an original game of i crap <laughs> i didn't know that was go ahead and roll me um a performance check Yoink. and we're back we have successfully peed um and i can see everything again and we're in good shape and we had another good out of character talk off camera and <laughs> thank you, Eric. I did not realize that the reason nobody was ever doing sound alerts is that sound alerts reset. And I never unreset them. So like for the last six months, I've been like, man, no one ever does sound alerts. I don't get it. What happened? They were, everyone kind of liked them. And I thought they were all, you know, approachable. It's not like I'm asking eight, eight bucks, 10 bucks or something here. It turns out I just need to re-log back into the website. So thank you for staying through the break. Hopefully you had fun with the clips. Um, yeah, yes, uh, direct cheers. We'll go straight into the Book of Fate and we'll give the players rerolls, which they will need if they get into combat. Um, and, wow, talk about timing. Um, good evening and welcome to everyone.
coming in on the raid. Um, we just uh, have a great stream. Thank you for that. Um, thanks for bringing in your people there. Um, keep tapping. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, my name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir. You are joining us tonight for The Convergence, a homebrew game of Dungeons & Dragons 5th um, edition. It happens, uh, well, tonight's session is very much tied to what's really going on in the world, which is the multiverse is collapsing. And people from different realities are being pulled into our, quote-unquote, reality, which is called Reality Prime. And with each collision, things go really wrong. And... Um, Electronics are knocked out. So imagine our world in about 60 years with orcs, elves, gnomes, dragons, and no functioning electronics. That's the world of the game. The smoothest unfolding D&D story on Twitch. TM. Patent pending. <laughs> Which I will also say, these four women are the greatest D&D players and greatest human beings Okay, in the top five human being, top eight human beings, I know. Because if Mrs. Noir is watching and, and she's not in the top, I'm in trouble. And I really do adore my children. So, um, although given the teenager of late, I think I can slide them down just a pinch below my D&D &D players. I'm just going to put the... Actually, both of them. This 10-year-old was really on fire tonight. Anyway... Um, thanks for coming on in. Um, hopefully your D&D &D game was fun. If you want to talk a little bit about it in chat, you're more than welcome to tell everyone a little about how your game was going as we get back into our game. Because um, we literally just came in from a break when you slid in on the raid. And thank you also to Twilight and Keep Tapping and Luna, Miss Luna White, for um, joining the family and following. We're glad to have you as part of our group. <sighs> and Phantom because I can call that out because I've self and fully got things rolling again. When we left our heroes, um, heroes, are you guys still heroes? Sure. And uh, patent pending. Patent pending. Of course we are. <laughs> um, that's like the new catchphrase. Yes. Um, Ted has gone off to begin consulting his notes. Um, yeah, trust. There were trust issues. Um, that's what we should have done. You guys should have gotten into a round of trust falls. Oh, yes. That's yes, I would love for someone to catch Katie or Aveline. <laughs> with Katie, two gnomes Katie, in the group. Just the Sam catching. behind them. Like... <laughs> oh, God, that would be fun. And um, then Ted will get distracted chest. as Katie falls on him. You know, Ted, will, Ted will, will go off to begin reviewing his notes. Um, to see if he can leave something behind to create the illusion that he is still present if he were to join you and allow the four of you to have an in-character moment to decide what to do with your knowledge. That being, he believes he can open a conversion shard without releasing all the latent energy and destroying everything around it and instead channel that energy through some device he's invented that will send a reality back to its original state. Okay, since I feel like I'm probably the character that absorbed this information the yep. most, I would like to kind of relay it to them in more of a, like, like what you just said. But also, I just want to say that it also seems extremely dangerous, which is the reason that he wants to test this on the Knolls first and not use this on something like your plane, Aveline. Because like he said before, it could tear a hole and possibly destroy this realm or that one or both. Um, Point of order, he never said it would destroy Reality Prime. It but might... there's a possibility that it could destroy a large chunk in which we are the center, right? It doesn't look that way. The only real risk is to the non-Reality Prime. Okay. Okay. But if I roll a one and I split an atom, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that that it will kill everyone around us. Only and if that's... it bumps into other atoms. Okay. Okay. Apparently I did yeah, learn more than I thought I did in my modern physics class. I only got a C in it. <laughs> anyway, I do just want to relay that and just, I feel like this feels in 
while it could be incredibly successful, it could also be incredibly dangerous and destructive. And that is Sam saying that. So I just that... do we have any other option? Um that's the, as close to testing as this one is. So this is an immediate thing that we can do. Um we can test and theorize and try to find people who've been studying this as well to find a more stable solution. But I do think that that would take years. Um, this seems the speediest and most immediate possibility of trying something, which is exciting. But again, I do want to stress Every time he has said guarantee, I would take that as like a like a 80 20 in the best circumstances, 20 leaning towards destroying some planet. But it is essentially our only option without taking years. Immediate, yes. I think Adelaide and Katie, it's kind of up to you two. It's a risk I'm willing to take. I need to get home. And and here here's the other thing. We're going to test this on the knolls. It will make getting back to your plane longer in the long run, just because we'll have to then go find another shard and repeat the process all over again. So this is by no means happening immediately for you anyway. But even if this does go awry, at least your plane will not be destroyed. It will be this null plane. Although the implications of us possibly destroying even the nulls, I know I'm not the best person, but I have lived with Katie for a while and it feels like using a race of pant and non-pant wearing dogs as guinea pigs while they did try to kill us does feel ethically not the best. But I have a weird question for you, Sam. Yeah. In order to return the gnolls to their reality, do they have to be within range of the convergence crystal? Because what if they're out riding their pantsless no rolls? Right. So not it, very far. So to my understanding, is it re, it, it realigns pants. the plane? Sorry. The pants were the horses. Yep. yep. Mm. Ripping the hole through space and time back to that plane. I don't know if that would just suck everything back. I also don't know how long these gnolls have been here. I'm sure some of them have produced offspring. Would uh, our, those then return? I think Helena said that they hadn't been here that long. Right, but they are they are a dog species, correct? Like I'm sure that some I'm sure I'm sure at least one has had birth. If they came Probably. through pregnant, would that then go with them, or is that now considered would that I, baby I, knoll? I think my head hurts. Yeah. My head has been hurting since we met Ted. <laughs> yes. Did you know, this he, calls for a milkshake. <laughs> did he say also in that presentation that the people on that plane yep. need to be on the plane, or was that not mentioned, Rob? It was, it was not mentioned, and... Uh, Sorry, he, yeah, you can he get... He didn't yeah. show any people drawn on it. I didn't see any people, but I did see little objects so I, don't know, I lost track after slide two <laughs> i'm looking at slide 11. well oh, i already closed you it. have <laughs> you have to close it them. i still have it open <laughs> <laughs> he has, has, um, he had i'm gonna need you to keep talk. this open because i'm gonna be referencing this if you think that sam did not re replicate these slides you've got another thing coming he has little stick figures on slide three and four right and then it's math 
Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. And then it's just math and lines. <laughs> Which, by the way, for for those who came in at, with the raid, I'll let me pop this up here so you all uh, can appreciate that. Yes, it's all math. Oops. Math on math action. Someone said it was real math, and I'm still unsure if it's just not. <laughs> I bet spaghetti. it's real math. I do I, not I, doubt the DMs. I totally math. think um, he did that. Okay. But... DM will confess right now. Uh, some of those symbols are real, and some of them are not. I do not have the budget that the Bing Bag Theory has to put real math. In, yeah, this is in, fantasy And it's also math. with arcane stuff yeah. in there. Yeah. It's fine. It's, yeah. Well, no, it's now, fun fact, every equation on the Big Bang Theory is a math joke. Yes. Yes. I've heard that. Yep. Every whiteboard um, has some humor on it that only math people get. Um, I've heard that. I've never got it. Yep. <clears throat> um, yeah, but those... you know, this was really the the wrong campaign not to have Enceladosaurus. <laughs> God. Okay. You know, but I do love that it took us what seven episodes before before Barely Molly had to pull out the I'm an artist. Yeah, I really yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Please don't hurt my fragile art brain, okay? I have not <laughs> taken a math class in ten oh my god, in ten years. I literally oh, pulled Molly. out a calculator to add something together yesterday so i teach math and i use calculators to add there's maybe i shouldn't say that so proudly um no there's no reference in the in, in the ted talk and you can flag him down if you want to he's he's merrily puttering and and packing um there was no reference to what would happen to things outside the co the convergence return event So it's possible things would get, it's, don't know, be the best way to describe it. Also, should, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, should we tell Helene that we are not dead? <laughs> yeah, I it's think we love a that. long time. Can she see us <laughs> on the, the thing? <laughs> the camera? Oh, yeah, would she be able to access the camera once we had it set up or would we not know? Did she not explain that to us? if we had to go back and tell her or not i kind of kind of forgot and sim's notes are worse than sam's i'm just gonna put that out there <laughs> um also i i do have another question about this experiment would be if okay he said that we would have to be in the middle of the event but we would not go because of a setting on his patent pending device but then how would we know if the event actually occurred correctly if we do not go to the plane how would we know if that plane is still existing or was imploded upon if we do not travel to that plane well to be fair he said that the only way we'd know if it worked is if our plane re God, I can't word today. Um, return to how it was before the convergence. So we could assume it worked, and one assumes that at that point, if it didn't work, it would blow up as it happened. That is a huge assumption that an entire existence did not explode, and then we want to send our friend through that on the assumption well, that it doesn't explode. Life is risk. Is it the, is the risk, I'm having trouble following, um, the risk that the circle thing where the event happened, so there's pieces of my home here, like physically, not including just me. So is it concern of that being gone forever or my whole world being gone forever? Your whole Be world being gone forever not okay. just the circle like the whole world would this could implode it but i just had an amazing thought okay these cameras helena what if we were able to increase the signal and somehow send it through this event to the knoll side if we were able to increase a signal of some kind could we then use it to look to see if it worked or not I mean, that's a huge if, because that would have to be a magnified signal. But what if we were able to do that? 
Even if it was just for a second? You, you, you see a head pop up in the window at the back of the theaters. I would be willing to collaborate that. And you could have lead name on that paper as long as mine remains on the top of the Convergence event paper. I don't care about a paper. You can put your name on both of them. I just want to make sure my friend doesn't explode. Fair enough. We can collaborate on that. I would be... That, would, that sounds incredible. I would love to collaborate on that with you, but we also need the plans for these from Helena because I don't want to disassemble the one in order to figure out how it works, the one I just set up. So I think if we go to her and get another one that we can now amplify, I have the ability to imbue arcane into objects. Maybe we could amplify it through that? Oh, absolutely. I'm okay. sure if I, I have other theories of ways we do it. I've seen those devices before. I bet I could recreate one. Okay. Well, then I'm okay with trying this experiment for that. Although, like I said, Katie, I mean, if you're, if, I know that you, are, I lived with you for a while. I know you're religious. And this is a big risk to a lot of living creatures. I don't know how you feel about that. Yes, I I do. I I am disturbed by the fact that these gnolls, as whether they wear hats or not, or they they are beings, and for us to use them as you said an experiment, I I, I don't think that that is fair to them. They are not just dumb beasts to be thrown away. Perhaps you know how to speak with them, right? That's how you've been telling them how to do stuff, right, Ted? Oh, I just make really scary pictures and noises and sounds, and they all kind of, like, uh, leave me alone. Well, I know Helena knows their language, sort of. Well, and it, to be completely fair, I'm not hidebound to using their reality as our experimental reality. Convergence well, yeah. ha events happen all the time. We could easily find another one to experiment on. Right, but I, I think, think it's that... the idea of experimenting that's the problem. Well, yeah. but I know it's necessary. The issue is that we can't have a willing participant because you're risking an entire world. If it was just a person that needed to go and for it to find out. I want you to hold that thought, Pond. Born again, gambling man, get the fuck out of my channel. Go on. No worries. Um, if it involved only one person needing to be sacrificed, I would be the first in line for that. But I, I don't think anyone, us choosing a world or not, can speak for a whole race, a whole people, a whole world. So, how do we fix the multiverse? What if they, what if we gave them a cho- like, their matriarch, right? What if we were able to explain this plan to her? Um... If I'm following the ethical argument correctly, and I'm balancing the equation in my brain as it seems to be being presented, you would have to pull that in entire reality to know if that was something that you um, wanted to do or not. How would we do that? Right, we can't. That's why I'm trying to find like a ha have you ever heard of a happy medium ground? 
if we're going to fix the multiverse, we have to fix the multiverse. And there's no way to pull an entire reality as to whether or not it wants to get fixed. Right. As the DM goes, oh my god. <laughs> How about we have some time while we're assembling the stuff we need. Let's ask Kalena. Let's talk about it. I guess at the end of the day, we can ask who we can ask. I suppose we could continue to pull people. But at a certain point, it's like either we fix the multiverse or we don't. And and we're not going to fix it today. Somehow, there's always the risk of making the wrong choice. All we can do is inform as many creatures that it applies to as possible. I mean, we 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 send up a flare with a little flashing light that says, "Caution, caution! Your reality might be destroyed while we attempt to fix it." Which I don't think is going to happen. It is something to contemplate. Which we should contemplate on our way to get the, to the particle accelerator that we're going to use to open the convergence crystal and begin fixing the collapsing multiverse. Right, but step one, Helena. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. I am exhausted. <laughs> I'm just going to walk out of the theater. <laughs> I would love to have a cup of tea with Helena right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not even a milkshake. Not even a milkshake <laughs> machine over here. Ted, before we go, though, Ted, I know that you said that you were going to re record messages oh, yes. or things like that. Accolades, praise them, tell them to continue to do good things. Try not to eat so many people. Okay. Um, what exactly is your power over them? Is it just fear or are you, what else have you told them to do? Well, I, I intimated the necessity of a convergence crystal and told them that there would be, they would be greatly rewarded for it and that it would please me greatly and, and they didn't want me not pleased. What if, if you, I understand that you have a convergence crystal now and that we will have to go look for another one in the future. However, I think that you should either come clean or tell them that you are not a god. Then and they'll kill me. But you are leaving, no? So we don't tell them anything. I like that plan. Let's go. Could you hey, put their Katie. faith back? Oh, go ahead. No, I think Katie Katie is just going to die on this hill. To, or not. <laughs> she's just going to choose not to die on this hill. She's just like, all right. We just, we'll get to the ethical stuff later on. So this is not the time. <laughs> it will take some time to... Train him properly. <laughs> you got your work cut out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, look at the great job you did with Sam and us. You, you got this. We will. Let's go talk to Helena. Yeah. We're off. All right. Right. The um, Helena, the wonderful Helena. Yeah. The <laughs> it is it is a bit of a hop. Um, okay, so um, you guys can set on head to Helena's. I'm going to take a, a short pause from the game to address chat. Um, my chat is open as long as everyone's being cool. Um, my major issue is when someone comes to my channel, they start talking about race changes and Dungeons and Dragons at large, which, as Tappy just mentioned, is oftentimes used as a veil to talk about racism and to bring up what can be seen as racist ideas. It can be a very difficult conversation to have. 
It is a very challenging one. Even on my podcast, we've stayed very far away from getting deep into that because we want to be very mindful and sensitive about how we talk about those issues. Um, and then when I asked that, that conversation be held at a later time or later or a different location, I was directly countermanded. And as the channel owner, I reserve full rights to draw lines with who gets to, you know, with with who's here. Um, if you were deeply upset that I swore at him, I'm not going to apologize. Um, I did not know that person from Adam, and they just popped in. So yeah, they got banned. Um, I'm, I'm I'm sorry if you feel that that doesn't make my channel welcoming to you personally as well. That's never my intention. I like to think of my channel as open and welcoming to a very diverse population. Um, is It's what I, I strive for. It's what I pride myself on. Um, and I'm happy to talk about this, these issues more at length at a later time. So that's where it is. If you want to talk more about it, I strongly encourage you to join the Discord. I will engage you far more on that or come by a non-D&D game. I, I really would like if we're going to, you can talk about whatever you want, but when I say a topic, when I, when the guy running the game says in his own chat, please don't talk about that now, I expect it to be dropped. And the same thing, anybody with a sword by the name, if they do it, same thing. I just drop it. I welcome the conversation on Discord. I welcome it on Twitter, not during my D&D games and not when I've asked you to stop. So that's where that's at. I'm not going to talk about it again tonight. Um, I do not want to go to emote only chat for the night, but I will do that because I know the people who, who love our game and love us will keep things going. So so that's where we are. OK, we, we don't need to go much past that. That being said, you arrive at Helena's and deposit the somewhat crazy gnome with her. He is which one? Yes. <laughs> he is not terribly down with her whole university reporting back thing. But they don't hate each other openly. Um, he does also take to the comforts. A warm cup of tea and a bit of cookies. He's pretty good to go. Um... The one catch, you're not entirely sure you were able to sneak out without being spotted by any of the pickets around the mall. And the whole time you're traveling, there's that constant needling in the back of your, of your back of your neck that something's following you. If if Katie's feeling that, she's definitely going to do a, a perception check. Mm -hmm. I was going to say same the same with Aveline. You know, the more you look and the more you search, you don't spot anything, but it's hard not to feel. Maybe it's just the stress of the day. I want to go back down to the base of the tree and just kind of take a look around. Okay. I'm fully with the other note, Ted, and... Uh, Helena going over my plans to somehow amplify this device, even if it's like for, I'm saying like for a couple of seconds, even if we can get some type of recording to go across planes, how would we go about doing that? How can I create that? And how does Helena see what is being recorded or the video feed? Like, how do we replicate that for our own? Like, just. That is my, I'm not focusing on anything else, but just trying to move us forward with this. <sighs> I want to pause that. Burn coin, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you here. Thank you for coming in. My name is Rob, AKA Lantern Noir. Welcome to our channel. We appreciate you coming in. I should warn you before you get too comfortable, you're going to be moving to a new location because we are actually at the end of an incredibly emotionally intense three hour session. Um, and we actually did just hit a really, really good stopping point. Um, So, um, and, and unfortunately, uh, it's ending with a bit of a pallor over it, 
So I'm, I'm not my usual will joy self, which is it's shocking to me that we had a moment where all five of us probably would have stormed away from the table if we were in person. And we resolved it peacefully live on stream. And I think did a really good job of modeling mature behavior at the table. And we're ending on kind of the opposite. Um, up to the point where I'm, again, forced to split my attention because this is my channel. And I don't have ded a dedicated mod team. So I put on this amazing game with these great players. We, we open it up to everyone to come on in. And, and I'm really just disappointed at how my evening is ending. And, and so if you came in with Burnt Coin... I'm really sorry that you're not catching me on a big huggy moment where I'm welcoming you in with, with open arms because it's usually who I am. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to put any pressure on anybody to, 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 to echo that, but I think they would. Um, up to the point where I'm not even sure what Molly just said because I was busy just trying to make sure that I wasn't going to have to deal with another headache in chat. So could you do me a favor, Molly, and just recap what you were asking so we can we can end, we can get to a good closing tonight? Absolutely. Thank so, you, hon. two crazy gnomes and a Helena walk into a bar. Um, and we, and okay, so I just want to sit with them while the others are kind of like doing their perception checks, keeping us all safe. And I just want to sit and figure out with them exactly what we need to do to amplify these, um, like video capture devices, how we can oh, use okay. them to like look in live time um and what device we need for that and also just like even if it's just for a couple of seconds just to make sure that this convergence event doesn't destroy the world when it goes through because we're not going with it um literally just like theorizing and creating devices with them that i think will work or at least plans for one that i can maybe work on while we're long resting on our way either way um i just kind of want to like be fully focused on getting that to work. Okay. That is a huge conversation to which everyone else will probably be doing their own things during because they just can't, they're, that's outside their wheelhouse. Um, it is also very evident after about 10 minutes in that it's going to take weeks possibly to develop something that will do that. It's okay. not Helena's specialty but she's had enough training that she can probably get Ted to build something that will at least send back a packet of information to confirm reality didn't end. Okay. Yeah. Literally, even if it's just like a second or two yeah. of recording or something, that's yeah. all that I really need um, to feel confident in going forward. I just want to make sure that if we, if the experiment goes off, we have, data that our friends will not blow up their worlds or themselves trying to replicate this yeah it's going to take some time but they can totally do that it's going to take ted i mean ted's going to have to be working on it yeah is but is there any way that i can help like uh that so depends. that we can work on this faster do you want to stay behind and work on it or do you want to go get the particles accelerator Oh, I thought we all had to go to the particle accelerator. We oh, no. were bringing it back? Yeah. You just got to get oh. it out of the basement. Just go go travel uh, over there, get it, then, yeah. bring it back. Yeah, they can work on it for sure. How big is a particle accelerator? <laughs> we can stuff it in a... It's a thing in a basement. We'll just stuff it in the bag of holding uh -huh. in Sam's bag. That's true. That sounds Wait, like a plan. The bag of holding broken. Yeah, I, st I stopped being able to make it, but the Sorry. next time we level, I will be able to make it again. So <laughs> as long as we level from now to then, we'll be fine. But if we don't, we have a problem. If not, Avalon, we I can carry, we carry it. it. Yeah, we can't yeah. carry it. Ted, can you draw us a picture of what the oh, yeah, he, part, the part he already icicle... has it. Okay. Yeah, he has a whole book of diagrams of what it looks like. I, we just need one. No, because like, unless Sam, Sam, do we need more than one picture? <laughs> no, I think I got it. Okay. He can totally hook you up with that. 
unless I die on my way there, then they all might need their own picture. We have our own pictures. Which, this, this should, to be honest, it's a real possibility. All I can think of is this is the weirdest tattoo we're all gonna get ever. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> all right, note to self. Get the particle collider. Don't let Sam die. Get back here. Figure out an ethical way to test the converted. All right, we're good. Yes. And then Aveline gets to go home. That's my favorite part of this plan. And next week, we will start on that journey. It should take you about four game days to get there. Assuming... I can ruin that. Nothing goes wrong. <laughs> oh. What could go wrong? <laughs> Dang. I've not completely derailed this whole thing every single time. Okay, now, first, massive props to Outer Dork for that huge collection of gift subs. I deeply, deeply appreciate that. That um, I, I, I'm so glad you're there. And I appreciate everyone that, that stayed through the shenanigans. Um, I apologize for that. Um, I'm, I'm not over it yet. But I will be by next week. Ending um, on a high note. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Um, For sure. And I'm not going to talk more about it tonight. If we want to talk on Discord, that's an option. Um, and I appreciate everyone's support. Um, I thought it was really interesting as I was kind of commenting. I, I watched all four of these amazing women who are truly amazing women. And I'm not just blowing smoke up their ass so they come back next week when I say they are among my favorite people and some of the greatest human beings I know. Um, up to including their ability to, to check me. Um, which I appreciate more than anything from anybody in the universe. Um, and thank you for that, Geeky. Uh, um, I love that that's your first comment you make in our channel, because it means a lot to me. That's where you opened our relationship. Because uh, as we established tonight, uh, how you open a relationship is really critical. Apparently. Because um, here, me's thinking, minions, they're little yellow guys, and they're cute, and Gru loves them. And that's a great title. Oops. <laughs> 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 Oops. Uh, so anyway, and if you came in with, with Burnt Coin and you're still here, um, we play uh, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time we're here. I also run uh, Dragon Heist is what I'm currently playing on Sundays, also at 7 p.m. When that game wraps up, we might move to Monday nights because I'm trying to get another game going and all my favorite peoples that I would like to see at the table often have Sunday night commitments. So... Um, I hope we had stars tonight to talk about. So I'll start with Molly and we'll do our usual round table of who we are, where we find us and what our star of the night was. Um, I am barely Molly or bear or Molly, whatever you prefer. I haven't been streaming very much because life is chaotic and busy, but I post a lot of art over on my Twitter now. I'm trying to update at least a couple of times a week. Um, a lot of Critical Role art since they're back now. I'm doing uh, the new cast um, pictures. So I'm very excited for that. So if you like art and you like Dungeons and Dragons, you should definitely check me out over there. And my star of tonight, there was, hmm, I think it was like a lot of like really good party moments. Um, I, I like us, I feel like we're getting there, you know? Like, I feel like we're really getting there and it's exciting. Um, and I'm excited for that. And oh, man, I don't know. I think when we finally got to like a, an agreement place was my star, my star moment. Like we got to an agreement, it was all working out and, and the, yay, teamwork. <laughs> Perfect. NLK, you're up. Uh, my name is Nightlight Night or NLK here on Twitch. You can catch me on uh, Sunday, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and then, of course, Wednesday here. Um, I think, uh, and I played Katie, the half orc who does not math at all <laughs> and had no idea what was going on. But I think the star, honestly, like, for the amount of work that was put into the TED Talk slash PowerPoint presentation, I think that that was probably a star, a star point. Because, I mean, 
it went over both my and Katie's head, but I was like, oh, okay, I believe this. You show this to me, you say it with a confident tone. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that was my star moment. Uh, t- Tiff? Hi, I'm Tiff, Tiffany, T.S. Lamb, whatever. I played Sibelia or Sib. Um, your uh, human earth prime ranger and uh, all around trying to uh channel teenagerdom so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't um my star of the night is very similar to mlk's like definitely shout out to all that work you put in but my star of it was watching Avalon and especially katie trying to figure it out and just the whole like the hole in the thing versus the wall was just such a beautiful role playing yeah I loved it. You could almost hear the dial-up tone in the distance. <laughs> so that was mine. Oh, yeah. And I just, it was, everything was, everything was great. I loved it. And then last but absolutely not least, the amazing That Other Pond. Hi, everyone. I'm Pond. You can find me over on Twitch at That Other Pond, where I do D&D and other shenanigans. Um... I play Aveline. She is also someone who cannot math with a negative one intelligence. And so it it's going great. Um, yeah, the start of the night definitely has to be like that PowerPoint, not only for all the effort that went into it, but also I really enjoyed just watching how hard Rob clearly worked on that. And then like, there was definitely a little side chat going on. We we're all like, what does this mean? Who is Adam? Um, so like the combination of those things where it's like clearly your heart and soul and you're good at like figuring things out. And we're all just like, we all do art. Like we're like, mm. well, and the, so and the fun part to the Ted talk put on by Ted, which by <laughs> the way, I don't take much credit for that. That was part of the collaboration with Eric. That that's how his name ended up being a version of Ted was because he was going, part of his role was to go, okay, here's the big, like what your overall mission is. You can fix reality prime if I get these pieces in the same place. So we knew there was an info dump tonight and that's kind of turned into a, it could be a Ted talk. Um, so, so full props to him for that. And that collaboration, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for a better person to jump on that, to create the NPC because he and I have had such a great time prepping for this. And then again, uh, just to break it out, um, I'll never miss a chance to gush about, uh, B cake, our artist who's here on Twitch, um, who did all the artwork for all of this, including Ted, the, the somewhat crazy gnome. Um, which has been a lot of fun. And then I'll also give a shout out to normally we, I, I, you guys have been kind of quiet in chat at the end of the night. Um, so I'll give a shout out to their notes of stars of the night, the compromise being key. Um, the actual Ted talk be, was amazing. A uh, polymorph star of the night is that pond pulled a sword on a gnome. Cause that's what we need. We need the big hulking fighter to threaten the little guy in the ropes. Um, it was such a casual threat. I didn't even think it'd mean anything. <laughs> We're so used to threatening now. It's just a casual threat. It's just just a, a casual, casual threat. threat. You don't I, casually threaten people. I mean, I, also you know, like the I fact choose to swing like, her sword around being like, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> and, and I do appreciate the notes that we were able to keep you engaged. Lots of fun. Um, lots of... I, I, I appreciate that. Um and disarm the situation. Is that like the players or like the characters? Cause I think we all did a really, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that things worked the way they did. And I'm glad that I'm playing with such amazing um, human beings that I can do things with. We're going to give away more stickers tonight. If you're here in chat, type exclamation point crit in the chat while I look for where we're going to send all of you, but I refuse not to reward all of you who are still here and who toughed it out tonight with literally the single most emotionally draining game of D&D I probably have ever run. Um, that the highs and the lows um, and, and just the fun. And I hope, gosh, this is, this is how I know I'm a teacher. Okay, fun fact, while you're typing exclamation point crit in chat, I had bell palsies once. And that's the part where you're like your brain, your, half your face turns off. 
in Russia. Okay, we are we will definitely go there as long as he's up. I'm sure he's up. Um, and they thought I was having a stroke. So they called for an ambulance, and I joked with the EMT, like, well, I can't be having a stroke, because I've been like this for like four hours. If I was having a stroke, I'd be dead now. He's like, oh, no, no, you could be four hours into a stroke and not die yet, and then you could be dead by the time we get you out to the bus. I'm like, oh, clearly, clearly reassurance is not part of the EMT thing. But the best part of that whole affair, and that includes some really fun banter in the ambulance with the two EMTs, um, which I will not repeat on stream because it might be a TOS violation because it was kind of locker room talk, um, but it was still fun. And they did call me their favorite patient of the week. Um, is I get to the ER and the this is going somewhere. The resident uh, in charge comes over because they were about to send me up for CT scans and everything, like do the full workup. He, and he turns to her and goes, no, no, no. This is Bell's palsy and here's how you know. And she takes out a notebook and he gives her a full lesson on Bell's palsy with me as the model. And it was like the most exciting thing to watch learning happen. It was so neat to be there for her to learn and for him to teach. Um, and that's why I'm really glad we had that conversation on stream because I really like my, one of my points of pride tonight is that we did a really good job, I think, of modeling. And I say we as in the five of us because the four of you could have done a lot of different things and you all had, you trusted me, you trusted each other, and we were all really honest with each other. And that's how I think you're supposed to deal with that. And I, I kind of hope that maybe somebody later goes, hey, wait, how do we do this again? How do we resolve that? Because... Well, here's an example. Did I do a good job stalling so we could do the sticker giveaway? <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm really, there's, the new stickers should be here this week. Molly didn't put herself in again, did she? I don't think I put my in. Worked. We'll get you hooked up with those. I uh, thank you for that, Eric. We appreciate that. Okay, we've had a request to raid out to Hermit. We will absolutely do that. I do. I never am afraid to send people to this amazing human being. Um, if you haven't met him, where have you been? Because you're missing out. Um, if I can remember, there he is. He is currently playing Breath of the Wild. That should be a fun time. So go hang out with him. Send him my, my, my props. Send him all kinds of like positive energy. To let him know that I am definitely not going to be appearing in chat because I have some serious debrief to do with my players as I always do. Um, but send my love. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you for supporting these amazing players um, who are part of the game. And uh, and thank you for being the best parts of, of why we do what we do. Um, does anyone want to throw one last thought before we, we, we roll credits? Light threatening. That's all I just want to say. Casual. Casual, casual. threat. Casual, casual threatening. Thank you. Casual it's threatening. okay if it's casual. I just want to say my favorite line of the night is still... I don't usually read as gay. How did you know? <laughs> Eric, thank you for that. And on I that note, that's great. good night. And wherever you are, stay safe.